Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We back, man. This is the second one. We are back. <laughs> man what's good family what's good what's good yeah yeah we back i told y'all i'll be back with some more content man right back at you you know, I dropped the first one and I needed some rest, man. So I laid down for a minute, got some rest in between times and came right back at y'all with another one, man. We back. It's ready to crack. We are back. Yeah, man. So what's what's up? What's up? Now. I had. um, You know. <laughs> I I saw a video, man, and and I also read a, a comment that was pretty damn interesting, right? You know. So I'm I'm gonna let you guys uh I'm gonna read this comment to you guys and you know we're gonna we're gonna make it happen. Hit the like button, show some love to the show. You know, uh, shout out to uh, my people. Dang, I'm just responding to somebody. Yeah. Most of us who are in the central part of Florida, we frequent with Tampa, Clearwater areas the most. We don't frequent South Florida at all. My sister live in Fort Myers and they are flooded with Haitians. Yeah, South Florida is, is South Florida has always hit the worst with the immigrants. Well, hit the hardest with immigrants. You know what I mean? So I, I get that. You know. So we're going to get a lot of Haitians with this, man. A lot of Haitians going to tap in. A lot of my Florida people going to tap in, you know, because they know about this. You know what I mean? So they're they're going to. Um... Now, one of my one of, one of my subscribers said Red Supreme, the other the other Caribbean countries should let Haitians in. Guyana especially is a huge landmass that can accommodate them all. So I feel you, bro. Why don't they flee to the Dominican Republic next door? Dominican Republic want nothing to do with Haitians, man. They don't like hate. They don't like black people in the DR. Dominican Republic's the people in it. Listen, homie. The people in the DR think like Spaniards. They think like they white slave masters. They don't like they black skin. So with that being the case, you think they want to be bothered with Haitians? Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. Shit. He said Haitians need to touch down. In My man Cold North TV said Haitians need to touch down in Africa somewhere. <laughs> Yo. Ron says everybody has to go down from the East Coast to the West Coast. Okay. Yeah, man facts do they have a military i'm pretty sure they do <laughs> i forgot man i'm gonna find it right i'm gonna find it for y'all man you know this this video got like hundreds of comments man like hundreds of comments the haitians are coming through mexico regardless yes they are they're coming through mexico so uh, hit the like button, man. Let's get this show started. But I'm going to show you a clip where the Haitians receive some hospitality in Mexico. Haiti is very corrupt. It's the poorest. You know, it's poor. Yeah, it's real poor over there. I agree. FBA. Shout out to the FBA people. Get up here. Hit the like button, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Ray all that with it. Yeah. 
She wanted to Tijuana resident Janet Aguilar sits with two little Haitian children on the sidewalk, exchanging food and kisses. She remembers when she first saw the large crowds of Haitian and African migrants on the streets. It was unusual. Only about 1% of Mexico's population is Black. Aguilar went online to find out what was happening and realized the migrants were coming from countries with political and economic crises. She wanted to help. We come every day with them. We bring them candy, food, work with them a little while. Yesterday, they braided my whole head of hair. The streets of Tijuana have long been filled with migrants heading to the U.S., mostly from southern Mexico and Central America. Those migrants are often shunned by the locals, forced to live out of sight in sewers. Aguilar says it's different with the migrants from Haiti and Africa. They're always happy, always smiling. They're always having fun. She's not the only one who feels this way. All day, Tijuana residents stop by the migrant shelters where the Haitians and Africans congregate. They give away clothes. They drop off snacks like sandwiches and sports drinks. They cook full meals. Some of the Mexican and Central American migrants who live on the streets find this one-sided charity unfair. They squeeze into the crowds to grab some for themselves. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for every, everybody, all people. Just a few days ago, Tijuana residents set up a table on the street, offering fried chicken, rice, and beans to the Haitians and Africans. Homeless Mexican migrants got in line. Jorge Cruz, a Tijuana taxi driver who brought the chicken, was not happy about that. I told him, you're Mexican. What do you lack? Some of the Mexican and Central American migrants are also fleeing dire circumstances, such as persecution. But locals have an easier time perceiving the Haitian and African migrants as needing their help. Jose Luis Aguilar set up the table on the street. At first he brought the- So in this video, they're showing the Mexicans actually help the Haitians, right? You know, so, hey, man, it is what it is. I'm going to show you things from all angles, man. Uh, you know, let's go. Support the show tortas and burritos, Mexican food. But the Haitians didn't like it. They found out that they preferred chicken, rice, and beans. But right now, we just find out they like whole beans, not fresh beans. The surge of Haitians and Africans started in May. Since then, migrant shelters like the Sayonador Salesiano have housed and fed thousands. But as more keep coming, it's starting to be too much for the shelters. It's starting to be too much. See, the Haitians are fleeing to Mexico, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, this one dude, this one dude in the comments said, yo, Red, keep it real, man. This is what he said. He said, Red, if all the black people left the United States, if no, this is what he said. He said, if all the black, if, if all the non-black people left the United States and left it to you foundational black Americans, you niggas would turn America into Haiti. You niggas would destroy America if we just left it to y'all. It'd be so much killing and drug dealing. America turning to Haiti if we let you niggas have it. <laughs> That's what he said. I'm trying to find a comment. And then I got some more clips as well that uh, that coincides with that. But hit the like button and show some love. <laughs> Y'all niggas going to turn America into Haiti if all the non-black people left. This is turning into chaos, into an alarming crisis. <laughs> Shelter coordinator Margarita Andonaigi says generous Mexicans are making things worse. <laughs> All the charity has created a sort of party atmosphere in the street, she says. People leave trash everywhere. They fail to come into the shelter for their daily breakfast and dinner, preferring to eat outside. Haitians and Africans are mixing with homeless locals who use drugs, she says. Son viciosos. They're addicts who take advantage of the situation and they say, my Haitian friend, I love you. Smoke this. Drink this. She says the shelter has already had to turn away previously well-behaved Haitians and Africans who showed up under the influence. And the Nike says she's also worried about all the drivers who keep stopping and picking up the migrants, offering them housing and jobs and taking them away. Where did it take them? What was the purpose of taking them? They don't know what they're getting into. Next to the shelter, the migrants get documents from Mexican immigration officials who are working with the U.S. to give migrants set dates to appear at a port of entry. And the Nagy says the documents are problematic. I have here a mom who crosses the 23rd. This is her baby who crosses the 23rd. No problem there. But the other baby, the youngest, crosses the 24th. 
the shelters are working with officials to slowly funnel the migrants to the ports of entry. But Andonagi says that now that the U.S. has decided to start sending most of the Haitians back to Haiti, everything's going to change. Many of the Haitians may decide not to cross into the U.S. at all because they don't want to go back to Haiti, which hasn't... So some of them figure like, well, fuck it, we'll just stay in Mexico. Some of the Haitians tried to just live in Mexico. But see, America was like, hell no, we're not going to let all these Haitians come to America. We're going to deport these people. You see what I'm saying? Recovered from the devastating 2010 earthquake. That means they may end up staying in Tijuana. Jean Guerrero, KPBS News. Hell yeah, they're going to stay in Tijuana. She at Tijuana better than Haiti. Tijuana is much better than Haiti. A community of Haitian migrants has been in Tijuana for nearly a decade, fleeing a devastating earthquake, hurricanes, financial collapse, and now deep political instability and violence as an unpopular president tries to hold on to power in Port-au-Prince. Many Haitians are stuck in Tijuana, fearful that by crossing the border, they'll be sent right back to Haiti, but unable to make a life for themselves in Mexico. When a migrant camp was established in February at the El Chaparral port of entry in Tijuana, Hundreds of Haitians set up tents, hoping that they would soon be allowed to declare asylum in the U.S. <laughs> Dorleon Ito was one of the Haitians we met when the camp opened. He'd been living in Tijuana for a year. Ito had spent five years working in Chile, but the discrimination there was intense. He was trying to get into the United States, even though he feared possibly being returned to Haiti. <laughs> Yeah, so that's 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 a little flashback right there, man. Now let's go let's go to Haiti right there. I wanted to show y'all the hospitality they get. And I know, I know, I know, but let's go over here. You see what's going on in Haiti. There is no denying it, you can't get around it. Let's go. Support this show, man. A community of Haitian migrants has been in Tijuana for nearly... Hold on, hold on, hold on. That's not what I was looking for. That's the wrong video. Hold on. Wrong video. Again. Why do I keep going to that one? Report there has in Haiti, aid groups warning that roughly a million people are at risk of starvation amid political chaos and violence by arms. So what they're saying is this, homie, in Haiti right now, there's no food, there's violence erupting. This is why so many people are coming this way. Well, at least they're trying. Let's talk about what's going on in Haiti. Then I got some more clips for you guys. A growing humanitarian crisis in Haiti, aid groups warning that roughly a million people are at risk of starvation amid political chaos and violence by armed groups. And this morning, the U.S. State Department says it's making evacuation plans for American citizens. ABC's Matt Rivers is just across the border in the Dominican Republic. Matt, good morning. Yeah, good morning, Whit. A relatively calm weekend this weekend in Port-au-Prince after weeks of violence, but the tension remains extremely high as we await word on any potential political solution to this ongoing crisis. It had been weeks and weeks and weeks of violence now with powerful gangs unifying in an unprecedented way to attack the sitting government of acting Prime Minister Ariel Henry, and it has turned Port-au-Prince into a war zone, completely cut off from the outside world as the airport there has shut down, and it has stranded hundreds, if not thousands of Americans on the island. Keep in mind that not all of them want to leave, but for those that do, it is just about impossible. The U.S. State Department announcing that it will organize charter flights for American citizens from the northern city of Cap Haitien, where things are calmer, but it's just about impossible to get there. There is one single highway that runs there between Port-au-Prince and Cap Haitien. I've been on it before. It is entirely gang controlled. Make no mistake, you will risk your life. No question going from Port-au-Prince to Cap Haitien right now. But many people are still trying to make that trip, Janae, which means that it's so bad there. They're forced to do that. One million people, roughly, according to the World Food Program, now at risk of famine or starvation, uh, and starvation rather, because of what's going on in Haiti. Janae. So many innocent. Now, that's crazy, man, when you think about what was going on. That's crazy. And 
uh it's something going on in cuba too man it's not haiti they got something going on in cuba so um ron de was 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 ahead of the game when he made when he when he created that law the sb 1718 he knew what was going to happen just think about it man you got all these mexicans in florida coming out then you got the haitians the cubans man they would that place would be terrible florida would be a war zone just like haiti if they just opened the floodgates for all these cubans and, and, and haitians just to come in so he said no we got to create something now to keep these people out and you think about california texas man that shit was planned and orchestrated some people caught up in it and matt the way you described that one road out to safety but you'll risk your life taking it thank you matt hi everyone george stephanopoulos here thanks for checking out the abc there you go there you go so hit the like button man and show us show what it show us it is what it is haiti has been without any sort of elected government for more than a year now and this past week things appeared to go from bad to much worse We've asked Martha Teichner to take the long view. How could Haiti even get to the point that its capital, Port-au-Prince, is paralyzed by armed gangs? For at least part of the answer, take a look at its history. You may find it hard to believe. The island Haiti shares with the Dominican... See, there you go. You got Cuba right there puerto rico and right in between and then you got jamaica at the bottom but right in between cuba and puerto rico you had dominican republic and haiti right there in the middle bro and they're they're gonna give you some brief history about the place of haiti and why it's so corrupt let's continue hit the like button and support the show republic columbus landed here in 1492 and called it hispaniola claiming it for spain but Haiti eventually became a fabulously rich French colony, its plantations producing much of the world's coffee and sugar. In 1791, the enslaved Africans who worked those plantations revolted. What followed was a 13-year bloodbath. Then, on January 1st, 1804, Haiti traded the French flag for its own. It became the first black republic and abolished slavery. But in 1825, the French came back with gunboats and an outrageous demand, reparations. Haiti had to borrow the money with interest. Yes. So basically, you got to think. France say, you guys got to pay us reparations for not allowing you guys to enslave us. So basically... France told Haiti, because think about 1804 when the Haitians fought for their independence, right? And they fought to abolish slavery where they had a victory, right? But guess what? France came back, 1825, saying, you guys owe us with interest. You guys basically owe us because you won't allow us to enslave you anymore. And guess what? You know how much money that France made off of Haiti with the sugar trade and all that shit going on down there? France became wealthy off of Haiti's labor. So they said, we're going to punish you guys for not allowing us to enslave you anymore. That's pretty much what happened. Hit the like button and support the show. Hit the cash app, dollar sign red 1803. Yeah, true story. Bloodbath. Then, on January 1st, 1804, Haiti traded the French flag for its own. It became the first black republic and abolished slavery. But in 1825, the French came back with gunboats and an outrageous demand <laughs> reparations haiti had to borrow the money with interest yes from france in the range of 20 billion dollars at a minimum today's this, money today's money jake johnston is the author of aid state an analysis of the effects of foreign intervention in haiti <laughs> they wanted to be paid to recognize haiti right paid for their lost property the enslaved population that had become an independent nation. It has a huge impact knowing that you gain your freedom. Now listen, homie, if that ain't gangsterism and capitalism all in one, I don't know what is. You're basically going to pay me for not allowing us to enslave you. 
basically saying how dare you stand up and fight for your rights how dare you stand up for freedom you're supposed to you're supposed to let us enslave you look at all the money we, look at all the money we missed out since we couldn't enslave you guys for over these past two decades so now we want payback with interest because you guys fought for your freedom well, that's some crazy shit if i ever heard it and haiti is still paying france back today they're still in debt with france imagine that imagine you being punished for standing up for yourself fighting for your freedom <laughs> lord jesus haiti haiti been dealt a bad hand man ain't nothing but bad things coming up out of haiti you never hear anything good coming up out of haiti never but you had to pay the ones who were holding you yeah. as a slave monique so pleska is a haitian journalist and activist it is a collective scar that we carry. So it has a major impact because we could have been better. Instead of building roads and schools and hospitals, Haiti was paying off that debt until 1947. How important a factor has the United States presence and right 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 and i wanted to play this clip for you guys so that you understand the history of haiti and why they're going through what they're going through so this video this clip right here is very important for the history hit the like button show some love to the gang family dollar sign red 1803 support the content and involvement ben well i think it's hard to overstate united states marines land in haiti to battle haitian bandits in 1915 the united states sent in the marines took control of Haiti's finances and occupied the country for 19 years. It has continued to play political puppeteer ever since. Right, they've been playing political puppeteer ever since. And you know, Haiti just can't get out, like Haiti can't catch a break, y'all. They just can't catch a break for nothing. Just one example. The United States backed the Duvalier dictatorship. Francois Papadoc Duvalier seized power in 1956. Declaring himself president for life, he eliminated opposition with the help of his murderous goon squad called the Tonton Makout. The goon squad, you know, he had that goon squad with him, man. One reason why the United States ended up being a big early supporter of the Duvalier dictatorship was because they were a, a bulwark against communism in the hemisphere. When Papa Doc died in 1971, his son Jean-Claude, just 19, known as Baby Doc, declared himself president for life, but was forced into exile in 1986, taking with him, by some estimates, as much as $800 million stolen from the people of the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. Haiti actually held free and peaceful elections in 1991. Jean-Bertrand Aristide, a former priest, was elected president and was overthrown just a year later. So much for stability. Then, in January 2010, Haiti's worst earthquake in 200 years destroyed much of Port-au-Prince and killed, according to Haitian officials, more than 200,000 people. Damn, they said they killed 200,000 people. That earthquake in, two, in 2010, Haiti can't catch a break from natural disasters to the slave masters capitalizing on their ass. So, no, nah, man, the Haitians can't catch. It's like that island is cursed, bro. I'm even I'm not even gonna lie, man. It's like the it's like the island of Haiti is cursed, bro. I've never heard I've never heard about good things coming from Haiti. Never. Can you guys tell me something good that's come up out of Haiti? It's always a natural disaster, or they got to deal with the slave masters. Man, it's crazy. In the chaotic aftermath, <laughs> dozens of gangs emerged. They were working hand in hand with politicians. So you can't separate the gang situation from the political situation? <laughs> no, not at all. The gangs became empowered. The gangs yeah. were validated, armed, et cetera, by the economic yeah. and the political elites. Since the assassination of President Jovenel Moïse in 2021, 
Ariel Henry has served as the country's unpopular, unelected prime minister. His rest hey, my man said that uh, the, uh, the earthquake wasn't natural. It was man-made. Hey, man, I, I don't doubt anything in, in this particular time. I'm not. Let's go. You know, I wouldn't doubt it. Designation yeah. hinges on the establishment of a transitional council. Meanwhile, the gangs united under Jimmy Charizier, a.k.a. Barbecue, are making political demands. So what now with the United States and other regional players trying to broker the transition? It seems that Haiti has rarely been in the hands of Haitians. You are absolutely right. And it is a battle that we are waging to confirm, to affirm our sovereignty. Haiti's history has been described as a series of crises with brief periods of hope and peace. Well, There's they never hope and peace over there in Haiti. With brief, no, man, it's always uh, consistent violence, turmoil, chaos, corruption, always going on on that island. You never hear, any, you never hear about something good going on in Haiti. You never hear about it because it doesn't happen. It's like the place is cursed with voodoo or something over there. This be one of those periods Shit. or the same old story doomed to failure my heart tells me that it is 50 50 but my head tells me it may be 80 percent might fail but what i know is we got to take the chance because we're dying every day. Okay, let me let me read this right here. Hit the like button. I need I need you guys to hit that like button, man, so the notific notifications can go out. Get them up real quick. Now, Tammy Dorsey said, "Who told you voodoo? Who told you voodoo was of the devil?" Oh yeah, someone's who told us we Africans. Okay, do you practice voodoo? I want to know if you practice voodoo and show me was show me something good that came out of voodoo. Now you can say it's not evil. It's not of the devil. You can say that all you want, but I want you to prove to me one thing. Show me something good that voodoo has produced recently. Not talking about that shit in ancient history that might have happened. Tell me something as of lately. Tell me something good about voodoo lately. What has that done for anybody? Because if if if, if that shit was so powerful, why is why is Haiti still in the conditions that it's in? They should be able to use voodoo to get that curse off of them if it's of God and it's not from the devil. So show me something good that voodoo has produced. That's all I'm saying. If you want to say it's, if you want to say it's not from the devil, show me something good that voodoo has produced for the country of Haiti. Please tell me. That's all I'm saying. As gang violence continues to strangle the nation, many Haitians are trapped in their homes. It's, it's estimated more than a million people are on the verge of, fem, of feminine. Feminine. My bad if I'm pronouncing it right. Some are eating once a day or not at all. You got to expect that. Well, a tense day over in Haiti as the crisis in the small Caribbean nation continues Saturday. Mm. Uh, reports of clashes between the police and gangs continue. And CBS News Miami's Tanya Francois has been bringing us the latest information on these stories from Haiti for weeks. So she joins us now in studio with new video and the latest on what's going on. <laughs> Haitians, especially those in Port-au-Prince, are anxious, not sure what... I mean, I, mean, I, use, I use common sense, like... People lie about shit that happened two days ago, last week. I'm not going to believe some shit that happened hundreds of years ago and none of us was there to see it. So what I do to get to the truth is use common sense. I say this. If voodoo was so great and if, if, if it was great and if it was some good coming out of it, surely the, Haiti, surely the Haitians could have used it to protect their people, to protect the island. So what is what is voodoo done for the Haitians? Absolutely nothing. Some people would say, well, that's the reason for their struggle because they practice that shit. Some people would say that. Then you got some people that say, oh, voodoo ain't for the devil. Okay, fine. I'm not going to argue that. Well, let me tell you this. 
Show me something good that Voodoo has produced for Haiti. Show me one thing will happen next. There are reports of a battle between gangs and police. The death toll yet to be determined. A CBS News Miami source living in Haiti is a drone pilot. They are voluntarily risking their safety to capture exclusive drone video, hoping people will get famine, famine. Shout out, shout out, shout out to uh, shout out to my man, Brown Hornet, man, for correcting me with that one. Because I, I didn't know I didn't know if I was pronouncing that right or what. So shout out to uh, my man, Brown Hornet. There you go. Famines. There you go, my brother. Get a bird's eye view of what's happening to their homeland and send help. Now, this video is of Lower Delma <laughs> taken this morning. It's typically a working class area near the airport. Now, normally it's packed with businesses and people. What you're seeing is the aftermath of the fighting that took place overnight between the gangs and police members in an operation to help save and protect a nearby police department. Businesses have been looted. Some burned. You can see their hollowed walls from the air. The United States has now promised an additional $25 million to help with the humanitarian crisis. 362,000 people are displaced by those gangs taking over and destroying their homes. An estimated 5.5 million people are in need of immediate assistance, including food, health care, water, and hygiene, as those are increasingly difficult to access. Thanks. What you are also seeing is the port area being looted. Now keep in mind, there's still no air nor port traffic, so nothing is coming in or out of the country of Haiti for at least the last two weeks. So we've been told that the port is, has been under attack again, um, and the port has not really been functioning. Police, again, they had taken control of the port along with the army, but now what you're seeing is that um, the gangs have gone back in, and what they've been doing is using the population, have the population go in first to loot, and then they come in after the population. There's also a number of businesses, a Toyota business, um, a, I understand a coffee business that are in that lower Delma area. They've also been looted and pillaged in the last couple of days and so we're seeing that this is continuing now that was jackie charles with the miami herald giving us an update the u.s state department says they are hopeful haiti's transitional government will be in place in a matter of days with most of its members already named now government charter flights from cap haitian are expected to resume you must have a valid u.s passport to be able to get on those flights now cap haitian it's about a six to eight hour drive away from port-au-prince with countless gang members already blocking the roads in between florida's emergency management system has created a portal also for U.S. citizens who need help evacuating from Haiti for that. Yeah, man, <clears throat> excuse me, because a lot of Americans were stuck over there. They wouldn't let nobody come to Haiti. They wasn't letting nobody leave. So if you was over there visiting Haiti, you were literally stuck in that war zone over there, right? That's the crazy part about it. So if you want to go, there's no reason to go to Haiti. There's literally no reason to go to Haiti at all. You'll be out of your damn mind and try to go to Haiti. When all those people trying to leave that place. Link. You can go to our website at cbsmiami.com. In the studios, Tanya Francois, CBS. Hit the like button to support the show, man. It's Red Supreme. Get them up. Get them up. Get them up. Get them up. You can't see me. Let's go. Let's go. It is just behind. Gang violence and the lack of functioning uh, as in terms of the government show no signs of easing. The U.S. State Department sponsored the charter flight for roughly four dozen passengers. They arrived at the Miami International Airport on Sunday. It was the first flight to make the trip in the past two weeks. It was an awesome feeling. I was great. I feel like a diplomat. <laughs> Let's go down to CBS News national correspondent Manuel Bajorquez, who's in the Dominican Republic for us uh, on the Haitian border there. One island, two nations. Uh, Manny, good to see you. What do you think? Yeah, one island, two nations, right? The DR is doing pretty good. Why, why, the DR is doing pretty good compared to Haiti. And the Dominican Republic want nothing to do with Haitians because they say we let them over here. They're going to turn our country into Haiti. And I can't get mad at them. Don't want those problems over here. Just like we don't want the problems that's coming from south of the border in America. We don't want it. What are you seeing there at your location? I don't want those. 
It's good to be with you. So yes, we are at the crossing here, Dahabon, Dominican Republic, Haiti, just behind me. You can see so much activity right now. People coming from Haiti with these wheelbarrows empty. The reason they're coming over here is there's a marketplace on the other side. Typically it's open Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and this is where they can get food. We've seen eggs, chickens, water, medicine, the things that they are not able to get in Haiti, this is their opportunity to get it here, but they are not allowed to go beyond the point of the marketplace. This is becoming especially crucial, not only because there was already a scarcity of resources and food in Haiti, but because Port-au-Prince being now mostly controlled by gangs means that food and things like that, aid distribution, it's not happening there and reaching places like Cap Haitian, which is close to us here. So this has become a vital link for many Haitians just trying to get by. Manny, we were just commenting about uh, the Americans that were able to get out. Look at all that shit, man. They burning shit, bullets flying everywhere. Uh, there's no food. It's just all out pandemonium, chaos, corruption. Hit the like button and show some love. Share the content. What y'all waiting for? Hit the like button. Hit the cash out. What y'all waiting for, man? What did it take uh, to get this first batch of, of American citizens out of the country? Well, the U.S. State Department put out the notice that it had to be a U.S. citizen and that they would have to eventually pay for those flights. More than 30 landed in Miami yesterday. Our sense is that these first people that went were not people that were necessarily in a dire situation, but because things are getting increasingly dire here, they decided to just get out. Uh, let me correct. Let me correct another. Let me correct another misinformed individual thinks he knows what i think and let me correct you how you really don't know what i think because you're not even taking time to listen uncle sam got y'all fooled dr has violence and has a rash of violent towards female tourists keep believing the media red supreme tv whoever said that the dr was peaceful all i said is they don't want uh haitians over there so why are you gonna put words in my mouth like i said that the dr was 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 peaceful I love when you people come up in here and you put words in my mouth. You're not even paying attention to what I said. I've never said that the DR was all peaches. All I said is they don't want nothing to do with Haiti. They don't want Haitians coming there. So what are you talking about? Please. If you're going to say something, at least make it make sense. My God. Just making up shit that I never said. American citizens out of the country. <laughs> <laughs> well, the U.S. State Department put out the notice that it had to be a U.S. citizen and that they would have to eventually pay for those flights. Now, let's be real. Flight. Let's be real. The DR is messed up, but it's better than Haiti. Dominican Republic is messed up as a third world country, but it's still in better conditions than Haiti. That's why so many Haitians try to flee there and they don't want them. That's the point that I was making. But somebody don't listen. 30 landed in Miami yesterday. Our sense is that these first people that went were not people that were necessarily in a dire situation, but because things are getting increasingly dire here, they decided to just get out <laughs> while they could. So at this point, uh, it's unclear when the U.S. might attempt another flight. They said it's all fluid because not only are they trying to see how many Americans may be trying to get out of Port-au-Prince, for example, where it's much more dangerous over to Cap Haitian, but they're also monitoring the security situation in Cap Haitian to make sure that those planes can safely take off and land. You know, Manny, growing up in Florida, I, I remember Haitian migrants would sometimes be intercepted either offshore or they'd make it to shore. Uh, and the policy of the U.S. Is, uh, has wavered over the years on that. Is there concern now of a new wave, given what we're seeing inside Haiti? Well, definitely the United States says they are aware of uh, concern about that happening. But at this point, it is not materialized, as we have seen in other years, where, for example, in the Florida Keys, you see Cubans and Haitians arriving by boat. The U.S. policy is that most people who are stopped at sea would then be repatriated. And in fact, they repatriated a group of Haitians uh, recently that were caught at sea. So we're not seeing an uptick yet. Part of the reason for that is people really can't get out. They're not able to enter the Dominican Republic and the Cap Haitian airport and the Port-au-Prince airports. Well, those have been shut down to very limited flights so far. So it's something that is on the minds of people who are watching the immigration situation into the United States. But so far, an exodus, a mass exodus has not happened. All right, Manny, thank you very much. Appreciate your work. 
right 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 so yeah man like i said the dr is messed up too but it's still better than haiti homie you know what i'm saying it's still in better conditions than haiti and that's the point that i was making you know we ne we never said that dr was a some type of paradise that's bullshit but you would rather live in the dr than haiti haiti is terrible there's always something negative something bad going on in haiti always you know and unfortunately man that's just that just is what it is and as another day brings more calls from haitian americans asking for the world's help in dealing with the crisis in haiti we begin with cbs news miami's tanya francois who is live in little haiti with the pleas to u.s leaders tanya that's right. Earlier today, there was a Zoom with elected officials. They are asking for anyone to please come in and help. Local Haitian community members and elected officials are pleading with the United States to step in. Every day in Haiti, people are being, minors are being raped, killed, houses, properties are being set ablaze in total impunity. This is what Haiti is living today. I have family members over there. I have friends. I have some friends actually who have lost their home to the gang. They kicked them out of the house while they were doing very well. In a Zoom this afternoon, lawmakers spoke out about the crisis in Haiti. The United States is offering hundreds of millions of dollars to bring Kenyan troops into the country to restore law and order. That money is on hold as Republicans wait for more details. For Marie Woodson, whose district is Southern Broward County, she says help can't wait. What's happening in Haiti hits home. It is very personal to me because I was born and raised in Haiti and I came here at the age of 21. Here in Miami, members of the Haitian community tell me in Creole, they are not only deeply concerned for their family members, they also feel incredibly helpless. This man says because of a lack of electricity, he's barely able to speak with his family. I can't speak with them. There's no electricity. Haiti has stopped. There is nothing. Another woman says they don't have their papers. They can't come. I asked if she signed up for Biden's program. She says she's done the paperwork, but they haven't been called yet. On Sunday, CBS Miami was the only TV station there as 30 Americans arrived at Miami International Airport after being evacuated from. <laughs> so basically, they're saying, like, we stuck here. You know what I mean? There's no electricity, there's no food, bullets flying everywhere. It's lawlessness and, and all out pandemonium, corruption. So they're pretty much stuck, asking, begging America for help. And America's not going to help them. Unfortunately, they're not going to help them. You know, now, if this was going on in Mexico, then the borders would be wide open to accept these people with open arms. If this was going on in Venezuela, well, then the border will be wide open to accept them with open arms. I don't know, man. Give me y'all thoughts on this. Haitian on a State Department's charter flight. It is bad. It is bad. Um, hopefully things do change and hopefully somebody step up and fix this. Now, still no word on when another charter flight is expected to arrive to South Florida with Americans on board. But coming up tonight at six o'clock, we speak to a restaurant owner who says his entire family is still in Haiti. For now, live at the Little Haiti Cultural Arts Center, Tanya Francois, CBS News. All right. Now, I'm going to switch gears for a second, man. We're going to go on over here to. Um... What we're seeing unfold uh, in Haiti is. Roland Martin. Now, we're going to see what Roland Martin had to say about his home. You know, Roland Martin is Haitian, but he but he pretends to be foundational black American. Roland Martin is Haitian, but he pretends to be a foundational black American. We're going to get into this clip right after this. Hit the like button, man, and get those likes up. Show some love to the show, baby. It's Perrine. Let's go to Cuba real quick. Then we're going to go back to Roland Martin. You know what I'm saying? Meanwhile, massive protests held across Cuba this weekend against the current regime. Cuban exiles in Miami showing their support for the protesters. Local tents Christina Vasquez is joining us live from Little Havana with the latest details on this. Christina and sharing this call to action to the international community. Take a listen. This didn't start yesterday. 
the, the protests have been taking place for years. This regime, either through Castro or through the current regime, has denied the Cuban people freedom for over 60 years. In an economy like in Cuba, a vertical economy, when the state collapses, all the services stop. And that is what we're seeing right now. Cuban street protests in the wake of power outages, sparking a renewed call to action to the international community from Cuban activists. The way out to the humanitarian crisis is to get rid of the dictatorship. Internet should be put in place. Who spoke at a news conference hosted by Republican Congressman Carlos Jimenez. They said they wanted freedom. They said they want food. And now, come on, man. Everybody want to bring their problems to America. The Haitians want to come, the Cubans, the Mexicans, the Venezuela. So we're just going to open the border for everybody to bring their problems, huh? That's what we're going to do here in America. America's going to become a third world country if we keep accepting these people with all their problems. And they want energy who said he's urging the Biden administration while working with Congress to identify and fund technologies to help Cubans secure better access to the Internet. The first thing that the Cuban government did, obviously, like they did back in July 11th, about three years ago, was to shut off the Internet, shut off communication. Why? Because they fear their own people. Jimenez sees echoes in the current Cuban voices of dissent from the large-scale protests in 2021 against the regime and economic woes like food shortages. Well, it just illustrates the complete failure of the Cuban government to provide the basic <laughs> necessities for their people. Democracy in Cuba is essential. And we did reach out to the White House for a statement and some information about what steps they may or may not be taking in terms of securing access to technology to ensure there's free access to the Internet by folks in Cuba that have so bravely over the weekend we saw stage those protests if and when we hear back from the Biden administration on that. We'll bring it to you. For now, for Latvia, I'm Christina Vasquez, Local 10 News. Christina, thank you. We'll already resign. But we are still facing now. Let's go back to Haiti, man. And I'm gonna we're gonna we're gonna go to Haiti and we're gonna touch we're gonna we're gonna see what Roland Martin had to say about Haiti. And we're gonna we're gonna get rolling thoughts. We're gonna get rolling thoughts on um you know what's going on here. Hit the like button and support the show, man. Let's get some more supporters, bro. I want to make this show longer than an hour, but we gotta get some more supporters if y'all want me to take this show longer than an hour. Facts facing political distress. I want the political players to rise to their task and commit themselves to organizing the country. Unrest grows in Haiti as the situation rapidly spirals even more out of control. It started earlier this month when armed gangs broke into a major Port-au-Prince prison. 3,700 inmates escaped. Since then, criminal gangs have attacked locations across Port-au-Prince. It's estimated 15,000 people have been forced out of their homes in the country's capital. And because of the ongoing violence, Prime Minister Ariel Henry announced that he will resign. In response to the unrest, the U.S. State Department chartered a flight from Haiti to Miami. More than 30 American citizens arrived overnight. The State Department is not the only group, however, working to get people out of Haiti. Brian Stern, founder and CEO of Project Dynamo, joining us now to talk about his organization's efforts to do that as well. Always a pleasure, Brian. Thank you. Now, 30, 30 U.S. citizens. Now, let's go to Roland Martin. Let's see what Roland had to say about this. We're going to see what Roland had to say about, you know, his people in Haiti, man. If he's going to show support or if he's going to, you'll see. Roland, Roland. Haiti is shocking and devastating as gangs rule Port-au-Prince in the country. Uh, you have a completely unstable political leadership. You have no one in control when it comes to the police or the military. And everyone is trying to find a solution to put the country back together. My next guest, Monique Liscom, is a journalist, former UN official and member of the commission to find a Haitian solution to the crisis. Uh, she is a native of Haiti uh, and, again, is a resident, mm -hmm. and uh, she joins us right now. Monique, glad to have you on Roller Martin Unfiltered. Uh, um, first of all, how long have you been there? I have been there since early January after spending uh, the holidays with my family in Miami. And um, how... How long, I mean, obviously we, we've seen Tibalt going on there for quite some time, uh, but really since the...
were pretty bad then. And every once in a while, there were massive demonstrations against corruption. There were demonstrations for social justice, corruptions, anti-impunity, uh, sorry, uh, protest movements against anti-impunity. Haitian government is sending curfew to curb um, relentless violent gang attacks. So they got a curfew going on. And then uh, from 2018 up until 2021, that pretty much was the rhythm. The, the gangs were there. They were kidnapping, they were killing, they were raping. And then uh, Jovenel Moïse died, the president, in 2021. He was assassinated in his bedroom. Yeah, and yeah, the president was assassinated, bro. 2021, he was assassinated. Man, Haiti is messed up, bro. My God, it's a messed up place. And the uh, prime minister came about. The prime minister was illegitimate because, in fact, there was no parliament, no elections have been held for practically eight years. So the prime minister was contested pretty much from the time he came. And so what has happened is that he did nothing to stop the gangs. And as a matter of fact, there are gang members who have said they have actually met with him. And I think one of the things that has to be understood, and I really want to be very clear about that because it is important, there has been an association of leaders, political leaders working with the gangs since about 2011. This is not a new phenomenon in Haitian history, but it is a significant phenomenon now because in the last Yeah, two you're right about that. Haiti is a dangerous place to be a politician, man. When you think about all when you think about all the corruption that goes on there, yes, terrible place to be a politician. Y'all remember when Wyclef Y'all remember when Wyclef was talking about I'm going to run for president uh, uh, for president in Haiti in Haiti. How many of you guys remember when, when Wyclef was talking about running for president in Haiti? Man. Two weeks, the gangs have basically taken over the the whole administration of the country. They have taken over the country. This is what I could say, starting from two weeks ago, Thursday. They walked in the streets with their machine guns all over the streets. It was not one street. It was not one a gang member. There were like tens on one street, 20 on another street, 10 on another street. And we lived it pretty much as it was going on because... T yeah, yeah, look at them walking around with choppers, man. Oh, them boys ain't playing. Running around with choppers, man. Look at that lawlessness. You understand? Another street. And we lived it pretty much as it was going on because TV and radio was doing it live. And then a gang leader had a press conference, really, a gang leader held a press conference and said the gangs had come together and that they were going to basically take over and they wanted Ariel Henry, the prime minister, who was at the time, I believe, in Puerto Rico or in the United States, not to come back. And in fact, he has not come back. So in essence, the gangs control the country because Haiti is a way that the capital is centralized. It's a nerve center of the country. It's so, a nerve, it's a nerve, man. So they hold the nerve center of the country. The airport has been closed now for 10 days, although other parts of the country are functioning. The northern part, is a little calm. The southern part is somewhat calm also. But here, where I am, with about 4 million other Haitians, it is terror that we are living. See, the, the thing that uh, is, is, is hard to fathom is, one, um, when you have political leaders who are aligned with the gangs, then you've got military or police folks aligned with the gangs, who the hell do people in Haiti trust? And of course, uh, politicians align themselves with gangs. 
well you have that happening in here in america but it happens to a larger extent over there in haiti because of the, you know the poverty right so hit the like button and support the show man the the trust factor is important and when the commission was beginning its work we interviewed all political parties and we also interviewed a lot of civil society and two let me ask you guys something man because i've had people leaving comments saying like man you blacks in america will be you blacks in america would turn america into haiti if all the non-blacks left it'd be a gang of killing and a gang of corruption if blacks was running america what y'all think about that what condition you think america would be in if blacks was running it because <laughs> one of these one of these people in the comments read a long read man they wrote a long paragraph telling me how corrupt america would be if blacks was running it it'd be a bigger version of haiti that's pretty much what they said i don't know man give me y'all thoughts <laughs> came up all the time <laughs> one of them was the lack of justice and the other one was lack of trust <laughs> and uh, the what has happened in terms of the association of the gangs is that <laughs> po politicians get the gangs or some politician have even created gangs according to a UN report they have armed the gangs they have validated the gangs <laughs> they have empowered the gangs so to get in power they get gang members or they create the gang to accompany them and to stay in power they do the same so people do <laughs> so the idea is to terrify us i know and what they did was they said well look at chicago Look at what the Democrats did to Chicago. What's going on in Chicago, Gary, Indiana, Philadelphia, ain't nothing but a reflection of Haiti. That's what you would see this happening on a larger scale if blacks was running America. That's what they were saying. And they tried to make an argument saying that, trust me, if you blacks was running America, every city in America would be like Chicago, St. Louis, Memphis. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I'm going to do a show about that. Can blacks um live in a peaceful country could blacks have uh could blacks make this place uh, a better place without whites and non-blacks or will we turn it into haiti i want to see y'all thoughts in the comments it is to control us <laughs> it is to make us vote the way they want us to vote it is not to for <laughs> us to be a free will so so yes, we may have freedom of expression, <laughs> but now we have no freedom of movement. Now there are no elected officials at all in Haiti, none whatsoever, no mayor, no member of parliament, no president, nothing at all in terms of elected official. So it is a free fall and nobody trusts the traditional politicians. In fact, a lot of them are under sanction for Canada, from Canada. Some of them are also under sanction in the- Man. By the United States. So how do you have a path moving forward if people don't know who to trust i mean I, I, if you don't know who to trust then how you're going to get anything done that's a good point like that's that's crazy right there who can haitians rely on that that is credible <laughs> that's not aligned with with gang members drug dealers uh or other thugs at what's the future <laughs> that's you know we've been thinking about that a lot and there is what i would call a kind of virtuous circle of people who are not aligned with the gangs uh, whether they be sociologists university professors former government employees agronomists former un staff etc so you have uh, thousands of haitians who are clean, when I say clean, who are not to corruption, who are honest people, hardworking people, who work hard, and they, they are either in civil society or they are running their businesses. And a lot of them do not want to be involved in politics for really one good reason, because the former dictator that we had, Papa Doc and Baby Doc, 
so annihilated Haitians and the political class that there is a huge trauma in that Haitians say politics is dirty business. Right. And 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 I understand why they feel that way. Like, think about what's been happening in Haiti. So in their mind, they don't trust no politicians because the politics, the politicians ain't never did anything for them. So why would they put faith or trust in that system when it's never done anything for them? That's only common sense. So I get it. And which is unfortunate because right now, since 2011, mm. the politicians have proved the right that politics is dirty business. But there are people, there are Haitians with strategic minds, there are very intelligent Haitians who have proven themselves here and uh, abroad, for example, in the United States. There are Haitians who can do this. A lot of them do, do not want to be involved in politics. And that is the major challenge now. It is to get them to say, the Republic needs you now. The citizens of Haiti need you now. This is not the time to stand aside. This is the time to come and get the likes up family everybody that's watching right now y'all need to take y'all finger and hit the like button man support this content man uh we bring you everything man you know i try to cover everything that's important man so this is right here this is one of those shows man where y'all need to hit the like button and share the content right and like i said man uh you can't expect for haitians to trust politicians they never done anything for them so there's no trust there's nothing to latch on to it's not like you can say, well, such and such did this. They have no positive examples to look forward to. So why would they trust politicians? And provide your support to provide your ex expertise, your experience. But there oh. are people. It is just getting them out to actually do, do the work. And that is the major challenge. But right now, there are a lot of some politicians some people from the private sector some people from the diaspora because there is a haitian american organization that is working also and some people from the political class who are trying to find a solution put together a kind of provisional a commission that can actually run uh, the country it's going to be extremely challenging uh, because the gangs are saying they want somebody else in the uh, in the presidential offices so it's going to be extremely challenging particularly because security is a major major issue plus there is a humanitarian situation because what happens is what when the gangs want to spread out and gain more territory because that's how they came from 10 percent of port-au-prince to now controlling about 80 percent of the capital city it is at one time they go and they just overrun different neighborhoods and people have to grab a bag quickly and leave those areas and some of these people are in schools some of these people are in schools they're everywhere hit the like button share the content what's going on in haiti um what do you guys think about american embracing haitians should america just say nah haiti got to fend for himself or do you feel like America should open the doors for Haiti to allow them to come in? Give me your thoughts in the comments. Should should America help Haiti and um, extend a helping hand? Or should we say, nah, let the Haitians spend for themselves? We got enough problems over here. Give me your thoughts in the comments. Give me some feedback. Some of these people are in stadiums. Some of these people are just out, even though it's raining a lot these days. So their people are... It's about 400,000 people who are in that situation. They call them displaced because they had to leave their homes. And then you have people who are hungry. The UN says there are about 4, 4 million Haitians. That's about one third of the population that is going hungry tonight. And there are thousands of women who have been raped. When I say women, some girls, young, like 11 years old, 12 years old, who have been gang raped, sometimes in front of their families. <laughs> so it is a huge, 
emergency. It is a, a disturbing, horrifying situation. It's a disturbing, horrifying situation. Let me see how many likes we got. Let me see how many supporters we got. And let me see how many likes we got. I got I to look at this real quick. Because uh, we got 200 something plus people, man. Ain't nobody been supporting the show. Ain't nobody been supporting the show. So let me look at this. What are we going to do with this real quick? Let me see how many likes we got versus how many supporters. We got 200 some people, 200 uh, some people watching. Let me see. Now we got the like. You guys are doing good on the likes. I'll say that you guys are doing good on the likes. And I appreciate that with the likes. But uh, where's the support for the show? Let's go that we are living in so whoever comes and takes power and it will have to be a kind of com co communal almost kind of power because you need that to make peace is going to have a very 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 difficult tough time to bring things. that's why i asked you guys how y'all feel about it man should america extend a helping hand to haiti or should we say nah they gotta fight for their own country we ain't got nothing to do with that some people say oh well, americans should open their doors for haiti some of you guys say hell no nah, let Haitians deal with their own problems we got enough problems over here huh thanks to to somewhere where we can go out uh, it's it's horrifying what we're going to. It's horrifying. Hey, Monique, and uh, you are trying to leave the country, correct? <laughs> I had to go to uh, Miami because we are trying to do some advocacy with Congress. We have meetings with uh, the Institute of the <laughs> Black World. We're trying to do a rally in Washington. We have a meeting on 21st with the Congress. We're supposed to have appointments with perhaps some officials at State Department, and the airport is closed. I was supposed to leave Friday, last Friday. My flight was canceled. I was supposed to leave uh, this Saturday. <laughs> tomorrow c-max said tell him just like sunny tell him no <laughs> tell him no <laughs> uh r gtm gtm said haitians belong in africa <laughs> how many of y'all agree with that he said haitians belong in africa not america okay just give me some feedback i ain't mad at you you know we ain't got it <laughs> so send them to africa huh my flight was canceled, <laughs> and the worst part of it is when I go to make a new <laughs> reservation, nothing, oh, because nice. American <laughs> Airlines is not able to say when the airport might close, when they might be running. So, so yes, I am here, stranded. Fortunately, I am home. <laughs> Fortunately, I have a garden. Fortunately, I live in a rural area where there are farms and I can get vegetables and I can get a, some, you know, some food. So I am really privileged in that sense. But I am sorry that I will have to miss all of these events that have been planned so that we can do advocacy for Haiti. All right, then. Uh, Monique, we sure appreciate it. Uh <laughs> So now you heard, and, and you know, she's from Haiti. So, you know, she, you know, she understands what's, what's really going on there, man. You dig what I'm saying? A chartered flight carrying U.S. citizens out of Haiti has arrived in Miami with just under 50 people on board. It flew out of the northern town of Cap Haitien as gang violence has closed the airport in the capital, Port-au-Prince. Gangs still control large parts of the capital, and people are trying to head north to safer areas. Our Central America correspondent, Will Grant, is one of the first international journalists to get into the country and reports now from Cap Haitien, where many displaced yeah. people have been heading. Cap Haitien suffers from almost all of Haiti's deepest problems. Grinding poverty, chaos, disorder and corruption but crucially not gang violence. So it's becoming the main safe haven for people forced to leave the gang. <laughs> hey, man, he was cold with it. He said, man, send them to Africa. 
<laughs> I said, hey, should America extend a helping hand to Haiti? He said, hell no, nah, send them to Africa. <laughs> Africa don't want them either, bro. Africa don't want them. Hell no, nah. Africa said, shit, no, nah, we don't want them over here. <laughs> Send them to America. They taken. They took. Send them to America. They took millions of Mexicans and Venezuelans. Why not take the Haitians? Controlled <laughs> capital, Portuguese. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Another busload <laughs> arrives, having run the gauntlet of a dangerous journey. <laughs> it took us hours longer than it should, as we had to reroute uh, around the gang yeah. checkpoints, and there was gunfire. Says this passenger, who was clearly shaken. Uh, yeah. Fennel Pierre made the same journey six months ago. It's almost impossible to pull yourself from <laughs> Hey, man, they say you shit America, man. Y'all already took millions of Mexicans and Venezuelans. Why not accept the Haitians? I said, well, you do got a point. <laughs> Fennel managed it. <laughs> <laughs> but becoming a middle-class businessman made him a target. The gangs destroyed his business, ransacked his house, and tried to kidnap him. And in the process, plunged him and his family back into poverty. This is just 2% of the life I used to live. In fact, I'm not leaving. I'm just existing. The longer the power vacuum in Haiti continues, the worse the humanitarian emergency here becomes. Shout out to uh, Bernice for the 10. Shout out to Tracy for the 15. Shout out to Roderick DeBose for the seven. Shout out to Danny. Shout out to uh Daiwan, man, for the 10. I appreciate you, my brother, for supporting the content. Real shit. So, like I said, should America extend a helping hand to Haiti? Or should we tell them no, like Sonny, and tell Africa to deal with the problem? I don't know. Well, then they're gonna say, Well, y'all, y'all sat up there and took in millions of Mexicans and, Ven and Venezuelans. Why not accept the Haitians? Hmm. How you guys feel about that? Give me your thoughts in the comments. In turn, more and more displaced people will flock to the city of Cap Haitian in search of refuge from the violent gangs that have such a tight grip on the capital. <laughs> One of Haiti's main gangs has released a slicky... Man, them dudes, them dudes got them chopper styles out with that mask on. They ain't playing no games with them. They ain't playing no games with them over there in Haiti. Bullets flying everywhere. Huh? What do you know? Sit up there and support the show. Produced video currently circulating online. Man. It shows a well-armed militia, a group prepared to take on the Haitian state and any international force which might be deployed here. While the security situation is that of a failed state, so are the politics. We have violence, lady. Yuri Latod II was the head of the Senate and is currently under U.S. sanctions for alleged links to drug trafficking and gangs. That's something he denies and points the finger of blame at his opponents instead. Government works with the gangs. And this is the problem. The gangs become another institution of the state. And in this situation, police can do anything. Amid the worsening crisis, the U.S. State Department has laid on a charter flight for Americans to leave for Florida. Several dozen took up the opportunity to flee. However, that's a luxury most Haitians aren't afforded and must seek a safe place inside Haiti instead. All right, now there you go, man. I just wanted to show you. Chopper style, chop, chop, chopper style. You see how, you know what I mean? You, you see how, like, what's going on? We've been wanting chop chopper style, chop chop chopper style. That's what they're running around with chopper styles. Choppers out now. Letting niggas see the full threat of violence that's gonna ensue in Haiti. The violence will erupt. Where will the people go? Do they have any choice? No, they're stuck in Haiti. They're stuck to deal with the poverty. Need to go all along. It's just we have an. The ongoing chaos in Haiti has become extremely tense as armed groups have banded together in an attempt to overthrow the government. Groups attacking and setting fire to the home of Haiti's National Police Director in Port-au-Prince. Haiti's Prime Minister has not returned to the country due to the violence. U.S. Marines were flown in earlier this week to rescue a group of employees from the U.S. Embassy.
Joining us now from Port-au-Prince is Gary Kalikst, the Communications and Program Visibility Manager for the Community now, Organized... Let, let's talk about FAIR. Now, we understand that life isn't FAIR, but I want you guys to take a, a, you know, listen to me with an open ear. Now, we took in millions of Mexicans and Venezuelans, but we ain't going to show no love to the Haitians. How do y'all feel about that? Now, some people might say, man, we can't afford to take on no more problems. We already got millions of Mexicans over here. We can't take on the Haitians... You can't take on the Haitians. We already got millions of Mexicans and we still got to pay for them. <laughs> Inflation and taxes, all hot of whacking shit. Paying $7 for a fucking, you get what I'm saying, for, you know, for some orange juice or, you know, eggs went up to five, $6. Blame it on the inflation. Blame it on the Mexicans and Venezuelans. So why not help out Haitians? Give me your thoughts in the comments, you know? Relief effort in Haiti. <laughs> Gary, thank you so much for speaking with us, especially under these circumstances. CORE, that organization formed in response uh, after the devastating earthquake in Haiti in 2010. Now you're dealing with another humanitarian crisis there. Tell us how your response has evolved. Thank you for having me. Um, the current situation in Haiti is alarming and that make today humanitarian support being more difficult since world's blog airport is also <laughs> blocked it is now a day harder to reach people in difficult situation and, and, and gary in such a difficult situation you mentioned the airport is blocked and, and people are living in fear how are you able to deliver food and aid while there is active violence um, CORE operates in Haiti in the West Department and also operates in the south of Haiti. Even if the crisis is emphasized more in the West Department, but it also affects the national economy because people living in countryside so, such as the south, um, the NIMS Department, can't come in port au to sell the, the merchandise. So that affects the situation they also have food security needs and core is actually warning a program a food security program in the south department helping these people who are today not able to come in port prince to sell the products and also core has an education program core on and operates a school in port prince uh, I can say supporting education is one of the most important aspects of supporting humanitarian needs in Haiti because today. So support humanitarian needs in Haiti. Look at them chopper styles. You think he worried about fingerprints? They don't check no damn fingerprints in, in Haiti. So hell yeah, you load that gun up with no gloves. Don't nobody care about no murder in Haiti. That's regular day to day life. Ain't nobody finna sit up there and pick up no shell cases for fingerprints. Don't nobody give a shit. It's not like going to solve it and lock somebody up. So look, he load that, he load, chop, chopper style, chop, choppers out, chop, chopper style, loaded up the chopper with no gloves on. Didn't give a damn about fingerprints. Nobody gives a shit about a homicide in Haiti. Please believe me. It is one of the most important aspects of supporting humanitarian <laughs> needs in Haiti because today we have a lot of um, oh, man, gangs style, and their youth. And you mentioned Not education proud. being one of the issues facing Haitians. What would you say are some of the most serious, immediate issues you see Haitians face, facing right now? <laughs> um, one of the biggest issues that we're facing now in Haiti, it is about security. Because as I already mentioned, um, the population is living with stress due to rampant violent situation. Because you are not, uh, you can live with your ease wherever you are in Haiti. Because you, when you go out, you have the fear of being uh, at rich by a stray bullet, or you have the fear that your neighborhood can be invaded by bandits. Gary, your country, they're going through such a difficult time. Now that Prime Minister Ariel Henry has resigned and there are plans for a presidential transition council, are you hopeful that things could get better? 
shout out to stephanie for the 13 she said for the good content red i appreciate you stephanie for the 13 salute to the ladies and brothers for supporting the content hit the like button if you haven't already the game flows so heavy yeah particularly i am hopeful that the situation will get better and also a lot of Haitian hopes that the situation will get better so i wish that in the coming months we could have mm -hmm. election, we could have a new president, and that we could have stable situation in Haiti and making also it easier for the humanitarian organizations, such call for which I'm working to deliver. I think I, I think um uh, uh get us some more supporters, man. Get us get us get us like three more supporters, man. We deserve it over here. And I open the phone line for y'all to call in and speak. You know what I mean? Um Let's do it. We're not asking for 50 cash apps like, you know who. I ain't got to say no names, but we're not asking you guys to give us 50, but just come with the support. I'll open the phone line for you guys to voice your opinion. Hit the like button to support the show. And like I said, should America extend a helping hand to Haiti? Well, they're going to say you guys allow millions of Mexicans and Venezuelans to come. Why not help the Haitians? Give me your thoughts in the comments. Better humanitarian support to those people in needs because... <laughs> Um, the situation, the crisis that we are facing today in Haiti, that generate, that create much <laughs> more humanitarian and emergency needs that affect highly the food security situation for a population that was already in, in difficult <laughs> life situation. Gary, thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time tonight and your efforts there. Hopefully this is resolved uh, safely very, very soon. Appreciate your time. Gary Kalikst in Port-au-Prince for us tonight. Now, there you go, man. There you go from Port-au-Prince, man. That was a local telling you what was going on. And uh, like I said, man, they have every right. They know what it is. They know what it ain't. Hey, man, we're going to continue to go hard in the paint on these live streams, man. Sit up there and support this gang. You did. What a tragic situation. You, you, you. Wildlife officers interdicted a vessel that had 25 illegal immigrants, potential illegal immigrants from Haiti. They had firearms, they had drugs, they had night vision gear, and those illegal aliens uh, were turned over to the Coast Guard. If you're far away from home, use an alien. <laughs> See, they ain't got no problem calling hey, these illegal aliens. They seen a, 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 a boat full of Haitians. They said, these are legal aliens. Hell no, we ain't gonna let them come to Florida. But see, when they talked about the Mexicans and Venezuelans, they called them migrants. But the Haitians, well, they're illegal aliens. Look what he said about the illegal aliens. You're far away from home, you're an alien. Wildlife officers interdicted <laughs> a vessel that had 25 illegal immigrants, potential illegal immigrants from Haiti. They had firearms. They had drugs. They ahead. had night vision gear. And those illegal aliens uh, were turned over to the Coast Guard for, for deportation. <laughs> Our next guest has been helping kids in Haiti for decades and knows firsthand the threat these gangs pose to oh, their and our Haiti. homeland. Evangelist Jack Brewer <laughs> joins us now. Hey, you, hey, you know, like Juby said, chop, chop us out, chop, chop us out, chop, chop us out, chop, 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 chop us out, chop, chop us out. If you're far away from home, use an alien. Morning. Let, let's start with some of your personal experience in Haiti. You know, this is a particularly rough moment, but Haiti go, seems to go in five-year cycles of chaos and violence and never achieving some level of stability for their society. Yeah, sadly, you know, since the, the earthquake, the horrific earthquake in 2010 that took over 300,000 people, um, you know, Haiti had an opportunity to um, be re rebuilt, um, but that just, you know, went, went, went away by the wayside by corruption. Uh, unfortunately, there was just so, so much money uh, that was misappropriated, you know, starting with the Clintons and, and assigning them uh, to, to oversee Haiti. And it's just, uh, it's been a, a decline ever since. I tell you what, it's a, it's mm -hmm. a sad thing to see and watch. Um, you, you're talking about millions of people. There's about 4 million people right now, uh, Will, that uh, will be starving in the next week or two. Uh, if we don't do something, I mean, this is going to be uh, one of the worst humanitarian crises to ever hit the Western Hemisphere. And, and think about it. What was the excuse for millions of Mexicans and Venezuelans to come? Oh, they want to kill my family in my country. I need to come to the medical for work permits. I need benefits. I need to save my family and flee my country. And when they said that, 
They they use that lie to enter America. Now look at what's going on in Haiti. That is a real human. That is a real humanitarian crisis, and it's televised. So it's not like they're lying. So these people, these are real asylum seekers. Not like the lies they're telling down there just across the border. But this is a real humanitarian crisis in Haiti. I'm not saying that we should open the borders for everybody. That's not what I'm saying. But we shouldn't have double standards. If the Haitians can come, then the Mexicans shouldn't be able to come. I'll say it again. If the Haitians aren't allowed to come, neither should the Mexicans or Venezuelans. Facts. Keep them all out if we're going to play the game. You know what I'm saying? Oh, we're going to let millions of Mexicans, but not the Haitians. So help me understand really quickly, Jack, because <laughs> I think in order to understand what could potentially be literally washing ashore in America, we first have to understand what's happening in Haiti. So help me understand the level Indeed. of criminality, gang rule. I mean, we know what we know a little more about what it's like today. We hear about, you know, yeah. barbecue, the main gang leader running the streets of Haiti. But what's what are the role gangs have played and what's it like in Haiti on an ongoing basis? Mm -hmm. So just take out your perspective or understanding of what a gang member is and throw that away. Uh, these these folks are now ruling the society. And so you, you talk about uh, whether it's their local government, even all the way up to their national government. You know, the U.N. did a report uh, and 28 of the 30 senators in Haiti all had gang related ties and in, 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 in drug dealing. Uh, and so when you start thinking about it, these gangs are controlling the politicians. They're controlling the streets. Uh, they've already taken over the ports, even the main port in Port-au-Prince. Right now, as we speak, um, the, the local law enforcement officers are battling with the gangs for control of the main point port into the country. So if you can imagine all the tax money and revenue, everything's pay to play. Uh, I have about 120 orphans right now uh, up in Kent's cost. I don't know what I'm going to do. We're trying mm. to get them food. We can't give get them food, Will, uh, because th the gangs are there. And so the streets are controlled by them. And so they they literally put up roadblocks, whether it's tires, uh, they burn things and cut off, put big boulders in the middle of the street. And, and, and you're right. And, and, right. Because think about it. Right. Think about it. We can't. We listen. We can't afford to bring more immigrants over here. We really can't. But if you think about the double standards, you will say, well, why allow the Mexicans and Venezuelans if you're going to you're not going to allow the Haitians where well, the Haitians are black? Hopefully you guys understand that they're black. So they're going to find more reason to not allow them over. But the Mexicans and Venezuelans all oh, let them come by the millions to cut off people as they're trying to move food uh, and what have you. And so, as you can imagine, if you can't get the food, you can't get the resources. Now, both of the major international airports, uh, both in Port-au-Prince and in Cape Haitian, uh, now are not receiving flights. The U.S. Mm -hmm. government has just announced that they're going to try to do a flight to evacuate uh, Americans, uh, but they don't know the date on that because they're shooting at planes and, you know, you have, you know, really... Uh, uh, army level military grade weapons being used on the ground in Haiti. And so this situation is dire. It's real. Right. You heard Governor Ron DeSantis, who's been out front uh, talking about all these Haitian migrants that are not coming to the border. Uh, even in Florida, where I live, you see uh, the Haitian migrants coming across. And so will we must do something about this. I know we've been focusing on Ukraine. Well, he said in Florida, well, they had the Coast Guard you know, and, and, and other officials there to stop the Haiti, the Haitians from entering the coast of Florida. Although some may have slipped through the cracks. I don't know. Shout out to my Florida people. Let me know. Are you seeing more Haitians in Florida as we speak? Shout out to my Florida people. Put me up on game. I put y'all up on game about the Mexicans. Y'all put me up on game about the Haitians. That's how it goes. We deal with Mexicans on the West Coast. Florida, they got Haitians trying to come from the, the Cali uh, not, well, the Florida coast from Haiti trying to land on the coast of Florida. That's why Ron DeSantis uh, has, you know, he pretty much put out, uh, you know, he told the Coast Guard to get out there to stop them from entering the coast of Florida. Now, are the Haitians still making it through the cracks? I doubt that because they're going to go hard on them Haitians. They're going to open the border for the Mexicans, but they're going to stop the Haitians from entering the coast of Florida. Why? Because they don't want the black population to rise in this country. So they're going to do everything. They're going to do anything and everything to keep them out. 
rain, which is uh, out of our hemisphere. But this one right here hits home, and we, we must uh, do more uh, to, to figure out this situation in Haiti. You know, Jack, one of the first things I saw, I was in the Caribbean last week, and I was reading a local newspaper, was how they one of the first things the gangs did is they broke into the prisons, and they freed like 3,000 right. guys from the prisons. For, uh, they, they, look how many people they freed from them. Like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna open the prisons and just send the prisoners to America. Send them the worst of the worst people. What you think they did in Mexico? Open the prisons and sent them to America. Why do you think you got so many Venezuelan and Mexican gangs? Because they opened the prisons and sent them to America. And think about this: when it, if you think about it, it ain't been the Haitians. It's been the Mexicans and Venezuelans raping, robbing, and killing. Look what happened to that 23-year-old college student in Georgia who did it to a, a Mexican Venezuelan immigrant. Look at what happened to that 10-year-old girl in Ohio. The immigrant impregnated her. Look at what happened to the lady in Florida stabbed by the, these were Mexicans and Venezuelans. It's not the Haitians doing a robbing and killing here in America. I'm not saying open the, the, the you know the doors for everybody to come. I'm just simply pointing out the double standard. Say no to the Haitians, but yes to millions of Mexicans and Venezuelans. Thousand, actually. Will. Four thousand, <laughs> four thousand prisoners right. hit the streets. So what I'm curious now, Jack, is what hits our shores. So every that that Caribbean newspaper, by the way, was like every island is getting ready to lock down their borders and worried about who's going to show up yeah. through boats uh, on their shores. What's going to show up on our shores? I mean, will it be the gang members? Will it be refugees? Will it be a massive influx of Haitians? What, what hell what? yeah you're gonna send gang members they're gonna send the worst of the worst it's inevitable you don't think we got cartel members and ms-13 gang members that just came from mexico you got to be crazy if you don't think so huh they don't do no background checks on these people they could have got fresh out of prison and let's send them to america let them deal with the problem what comes to florida <laughs> You're gonna you're gonna have a massive influx of, of Haitians continuing to come. We already do. I mean, even in the square borders and worried about who's gonna show up through boats uh, on their shores. What's gonna show up on our shores? I mean, will it be the gang members? Will it be refugees? Will it be a massive influx of Haitians? What 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 comes to Florida? You're gonna you're gonna have a massive influx of, of Haitians continuing to come. We already do. I mean, even in the schools uh, in South Florida, I mean, they're being overrun uh, with 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 you know Haitian speak, Haitian Creole speaking uh, kids, and the teachers don't know what to do. But you know, the gang members are also coming here. I can tell you that most of these uh, Haitians have family members or people that they know uh, in the United States. And so, where are you going to go? You're going to go to the closest places where you can be around family or friends or people that you know they can come here they can speak the language uh, and so of course they're going to come here a lot of these people are in dire dire needs and, and let me be clear some of these gang members have been in gangs Purely, uh, purely to survive. I mean, this is a survival right. thing uh, in, in Haiti. And so um, you got some some good people and some bad people coming to our borders and we must do something now. Right. Uh, and in addition to that, you're going to have a, a, a Rwanda genocide-like situation uh, if you continue. How many of you guys remember Rwanda, right? The, uh, the civil war that went on in Africa. Hey, man, check out the movie Hotel Rwanda, man. It was a good movie. And it was about something that actually took place in Africa. Hey, man, good movie. Check it out when you can. I recommend it. Hit the like button and support the show. To have these gang leaders uh, controlling that oh, wow. island uh, with no import and export coming through that through that place. It's, it's a really bad situation. And, yeah. and America needs to lead on this, not sit back and wait for Kenya or another country to do it. This is affecting us. And so Joe Biden, the up. I'm telling you, Joe Biden. Shout out to, hey man, shout out to Tyrone. Tyrone hit us with a five. Shout out to you, Tyrone. I appreciate you, my brother. He said, it's okay for the Latinos. Should be the same for the Haitians. Shout out to Tyrone for the five. And that was the message that Tyrone left. Appreciate you, brother, for the support. Yeah, I, I feel you, man. But it's like, I don't want the borders to be open for anybody. But it, you do see the double standard. We'll bring in millions of Mexicans and Venezuelans, but say no to the Haitians. Why? Because the Haitians are black. There you go. Uh, controlling that oh, wow. island uh, with no import and export coming through that through that place. It's, it's a really bad situation. And, yeah. and America needs to lead on this, not sit back and wait for Kenya or another country <laughs> to do it. This is affecting us. And so Joe Biden, the, I, 
I'm telling you, Joe Biden, if you're listening to this right now, you need to do more to stop this this situation in Haiti. Uh, you have been sitting on your heels and God forbid you're going to have blood on your hands with four million people starving to death if you don't act now. All right. Jack Brewer, incredible perspective this morning. Thank you so much. I'm Steve Ducey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Jack Brewer. Right. For that. For that. For that uh dope interview man um uh, i think he did a good job at, at shedding light on the situation uh and rightfully so man let's see what biden is let's go to the tech let's go to the texas border right we're gonna switch gears for a second we're gonna talk about the texas border because you do know a lot of haitians are just saying like they can't make it by boat to florida the reason why is because the coast guard is all over florida to make sure that they can't come you know they got um what is that called where you can detect the movement of the people give me uh, my moderators us uh, people in the comments what is that called when they can detect movement in a in a in a water it, you know they can like it's like a it's like when the coast guard they can see if somebody's coming on a radar right so they're going to stop every boat from from reaching the coast of florida now if the haitians want to come to america their best bet is to take a flight to mexico and come in that way because you're not going to make it by boat the coast guard is going to have that shit sewn up so so see, see all they got to do is cross the border in mexico all they got to do is claim to be an asylum seeker and you can cross the border right there from mexico so if i was a haitian i would catch a flight to mexico and cross through the U.S. border, the U.S.-Mexico border. That way, it's a whole lot easier because you're not going to make it by boat. The Coast Guard got that area sewn up. Today, the pause on the Texas law that allows law enforcement to arrest illegal immigrants is set to end after the Supreme Court extended it last week. So what comes next for my home state of Texas as the state prepares for a border showdown with the Biden administration? Texas Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick joins us now. Lieutenant Governor, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Uh, where does this go? It looks like the showdown is finally about to happen. So, Lawrence, we've been in this showdown now for years since Biden mm -hmm. became president. Seems like every day. So what the Supreme Court did last week was put a pause, a hold on the law going into effect. And what they will decide today. Shout out to um, shout out to Tony, man. My man, Tony hit us with a five. I appreciate you, Tony, for supporting the show. Right. It is what it is. Shout out to you for the five. Shout out to my girl, Linda, for coming through with that 12. I appreciate you, too, for supporting the show. Hit the like button, man. It is what it is. Is whether or not the law can go into effect while it's being resolved in the courts, which will take time, or is it on the hold still? So it's not a decision whether it's uh, constitutional or not today. It's can it go into effect, which we hope it can. And to the Supreme Court justices who are watching Fox, I'm sure, this morning as they get up early, uh, look, we're being attacked, Lawrence, by land, by sea, by air, literally millions coming across the border. Many are many criminals, terrorists uh, by sea because boats have been going into Florida with drugs and illegal immigrants for years. And now air a thousand drones a month, according to the U.S. military. And we've been seeing them for a while over our Texas border spying on us to help send drugs and illegal immigrants across the border so by land by sea by air i call that an invasion so so lieutenant governor it, it's so interesting because the outrage now from the media the democrats uh, they're trying to influence the court in this way is is against texas and not the people that are illegally coming across the border so what would the bill now look at this you got mexican look this was saturday bro this was saturday you still got mexicans and venezuelans Crossing the borders, right? Now, from the media, the Democrats, uh, they're trying to influence the court in this way. Is is against Texas and not the people that are illegally coming across the border. So what would the bill do? Well, Lars, thank you for asking. I wrote the bill uh, with Senator Charles Perry, and we passed it uh, late November or December at the end of many special sessions. It basically says we can arrest we can detain and we can either put you in jail or send you back uh oh so, so now they, now they're trying to now this is the thing 
you allowed millions of Mexicans and Venezuelans to come. Now you want to create a law to keep them out. That's bullshit. You didn't already allow millions to come. You should have created this law a long time ago. Florida was ahead of the game because Florida saw this as a problem. That's why Ron DeSantis in Florida said, no, we're going to make this law to get rid of this problem because Florida didn't want to deal with it. See, when you smart people can see intelligent people can see things before before it happens. Why? Because you have the ability to use critical thinking skills to see what's going to happen just by the way that the people are moving. I can look at the way that people move and see what they're going to do in the future just by the way they're moving. So you got to be able to run the sand to say, you know what? Haitians, it's going to be proud. It's going to be so many problems. Let me create this law now to stop some of these people from coming, man. We don't want Florida to turn into Texas. We don't want Florida to turn into California. So we're going to do everything in our power to stop it. Can do that. And we should have that right. You know, I've been in the legislature yeah. now 17 years, uh, years and years ago, I was in the Texas Senate. And I had this concept of it's illegal to cross into Texas illegally. So it's illegal to be illegal. And back then, it wasn't the crisis it was today. And people said, you could never do that. But it is a crisis. It is an invasion. By every, every definition of the Constitution, it's clear to me that this is an invasion. It's a hostile group. It's an organized militia, in essence. It's an invasion. That's exactly what it is. It's an invasion. The biggest invasion in American history under joe biden's watch the biggest invasion in american history under joe biden's watch the cartels uh they are here to plunder texas and america they're doing it all over the country we have yeah. people dying from fentanyl we have people like lake and riley uh being murdered by an illegal immigrant and you see a story like that every day this supreme court has to you see a story like that every day where somebody sexually assaulted or murdered by an illegal immigrant coming from Mexico or Venezuela. And these are facts. Who do you think doing all this uh, 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 rape and robbing and killing? I just told you who's responsible for it. It ain't the Haitians, but they don't want the Haitians over here. Hell no, nah, send them back. But when it comes to Mexicans and Venezuelans, let them come by the millions. Facts. Understand that our founding fathers, Lawrence, Never, ever imagine we'd have a president yeah. so weak as to open our border and let millions cross. And in those right. millions, never thought that we would have a president so fucking dumb and weak that he would sit up there and allow this to happen on his watch. I agree with that 100 percent. Uh, being murdered by an illegal immigrant. And you see a story like that every day. This Supreme Court has to understand that our founding fathers, Lawrence, Never, ever imagined we'd have a president so weak as to open our border and let millions cross. And in those millions, in essence, is an organized operation that the cartels are running. You know, uh, Lieutenant Governor, it's the perfect segue because I want you to get react to this. We're learning more about uh, this illegal uh, migrant, uh, Corey Alvarez, that was allowed into the country. He raped this 15 year old, uh, year -old girl. Uh, he was allowed in the U.S. through a parole program. Now, who is this dude right here? Now, this is a black immigrant. You, he didn't, you didn't made a bad name for the black immigrants. Look at this fool right here that allows up to 30,000 migrants per month into the country. What's your reaction? Look, President Joe Biden has sold this country out. Yeah. And every American citizen who dies at the hands of someone here illegally, whether it's a drunk driver, we see that all the time, or a crime like Lake and Riley, or these children being attacked and raped, go down the list. Every week we see these crimes happen at the hands of illegals. You would think any ordinary human being, any ordinary human being who cared about American lives would say, we got to put a stop to this. This is out of control. But what are they focused on? The administration fixing. Listen, all these, listen, Haitians will bring problems too. If we open the floodgates for Haitians, they will bring the same problems that Mexicans are bringing. I'm not going to just point the Mexicans out. I'm not going to just single them out. If you let people from these poverty, these third world countries, where the, where the people live in poverty, if you allow them to come here, what you think they're going to do? They're going to bring the same bullshit that come. They're going to bring the same bullshit that they was doing in their countries. You think they're going to come here and behave civilly? You got to be crazy if you think they're going to come here and behave civilly. They're going to bring crime to the country. Facts. Soft serve ice cream machines at McDonald's. That seems to be their focus. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> any rational human being, Lawrence, 
in the White House would say, I don't know what we've been doing, but this has to stop now. But he didn't even know Lake and Riley's first name. And he never called the family after it happened in those early days. So then right. Joe Biden never called Lincoln Riley's family. He never said, hold on, this is a problem due to open borders. He never addressed the problem because he don't he doesn't give a damn. Like he said, Joe Biden has sold the country out. Who knows what he's gaining on the back end? But for sure, he didn't sold us out. He opened the border for millions of illegal immigrants. And now they are dropping anchor babies by the millions as we speak. And now they are dropping anchor babies by the millions as we speak. How, how, he how doesn't does this, care. He does not care. How does this impact the election? And I'm not just talking about the presidency. Yeah. I, I saw that there were several members in the Texas House and our and our legislator in Texas that weren't strong on the border. Uh, Texans gave them the boot. But on the federal level, how is it going to impact the people that are in Congress that may be a part of the other party, the Democratic Party? Do you see some sort of impact back in home, Texas? Yeah. Well, I do, Lawrence. And look, the other news of the Hezbollah uh, illegal immigrant we captured about a week and a half ago who said he was coming here to New York mm. to build a bomb. Mm -hmm. And then he, re, you know, he recanted and they came back. Look, we have arrested nearly 300 people on the terrorist watch list. Again, we're being invaded. And I think what will happen in November, Lawrence, is this country is going to pick a side because mm. that's what this election is about. Pick a side. You're either for a secure border, for a constitution, lower inflation, a stronger military. I can go through every... They need, and they need to do exactly that. They need to speak to all these people that's running for office and don't let them tap dance around the question. You ask them, are you for open borders or not? I don't want to hear no bullshit. Give me a clear answer, yes or no. And I guarantee you, if you ask Joe Biden that, he's going to tap dance around the question. If you ask Kamala Harris the same question, she's going to tap dance around it without giving you a direct answer. Now, if you ask Donald Trump about open borders, he's going to give you a straight up answer and say, hell yeah, we need to close that border and deport these people. Trump is going to give you a straight up answer. He's not going to dance around it like Biden or Kamala Harris. So that's a clear indication that they're full of shit when they refuse to answer direct questions. Back in home, Texas. You know. Well, I do, Lawrence. And look, the other news of the Hezbollah uh, illegal immigrant we captured about a week and a half ago, who said he was coming here to New York mm -hmm. to build a bomb. Mm -hmm. And then he, re you know, he recanted and they came back. Look, we have arrested nearly 300 people on the terrorist watch list. Again, we're being invaded. And I think what will happen in November, Lawrence, is this country is going to pick a side because mm -hmm. that's what this election is about. Pick a side. You're either for a secure border, for a constitution, lower inflation, a stronger military. I can go through every list that Joe Biden is is disrupted this country. Anything good for this country, he's done just the opposite. Yeah. And America is going to react. And let me tell you what. Many people in the inner cities of America, yep. in these blue cities, in these blue states, are going to react. The, the illegal immigrants are all over their town. <laughs> that we wisely put them on a bus and sent them there to make this a national story. Will, will it be a 49 state uh, to one? Uh, no. But will it be an overwhelming win by Donald Trump? Yes, because Americans will pick a side. Make America great again, make America secure again, and make American cities great again. It's, it's such a good point. You're kicking, you know, kids out of schools in Chicago, saying there's yep. no funding for that for the health centers in Harlem. You got the uh, senior uh, housing there that they're finding housing for the migrants. Exactly. Hey, listen, man, they close several public schools in black communities all across the city of Chicago. And why did they close those schools? Oh, we don't have the funding. But next thing you know, there's benefits for illegal immigrants. Now, your children can't go to school in the community because the school doesn't have funding. Now, your children got to go to school in a whole nother community. And you got to drive them 15 to 20 minutes outside of your community to take them to school. Why? Because they're closing the local schools in the black communities telling you that they have no funding. And next thing you know, the school becomes a shelter for illegal immigrants. Now you're seeing a bigger picture. They're telling you they have no funding for the community, but they bring in illegal immigrants. And get, they bring in illegal immigrants and give them benefits and tell you that there's no funding to, uh, to, uh, to put these children in school in these local communities, black communities. If you witness the buffoonery, there but but you can't take care of the american citizens you know they don't put them in downtown they put them in the poor neighborhoods lieutenant governor we got to leave it there thanks so much for joining the program thank you lawrence
You got it, brother. I'm Steve Juicy. I'm Brian. Man, that, that conversation should have went on a little longer, man, because the white guy was dropping a lot of game about what's going on with Biden and his administration. And, you know, and how full of shit Kamala Harris really is. They never, haven't you guys noticed that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, they never answer direct questions. They tap dance around everything. Who in a right mind will put trust in those people besides a low IQ dummy? Huh? They won't even answer direct questions. You got the nerve to vote for that? Welcome back. Border Patrol agents arresting an illegal migrant from Lebanon near El Paso, Texas last week. The New York Post is now reporting that the man admitted to being a member of the Hezbollah terrorist group. He told border agents that he was hoping to make a bomb and head for New York City. Foreign drone incursions, meanwhile, are surging at the U.S.-Mexico border. Now, they just caught this one guy. I think they said he was from Lebanon. He said he was going to make a bomb and go to New York City. So we're bringing in terrorists. All kind of people that's bringing their corruption and crying with them. How many terrorists do you think we allowed in this country since we had these open borders? How many you think? How many terrorists do you think we allowed to come over since we had these open borders? Countless. We can't even keep counting no more. Uh, these are coming from foreign countries, their drones near our border. Here's what Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton told me yesterday on Sunday Morning Futures about that. I'm not surprised that this is going on now, that they're sending drones across is, is no surprise. And it's no surprise that Joe Biden is not going to do anything about it. He has lots of authority. Joe Biden is not going to do anything about it. He's the cause of the problem. So hell no, he's not going to fix something that he created. He's going to blame it on someone else and make it seem like he had nothing to do with it. He isn't using it. He's doing just the opposite. He's aiding and abetting the cartels to get more people here for his own political purposes. Joining me now to talk more about all of this is Texas Congresswoman <laughs> Beth Van Dyne. She is the chairwoman of the Oversight Investigations and Regulations Committee and a member of the Small Business and House Ways and Means Committees. Congresswoman, good to see you again. Thanks very much for joining us this morning. Your reaction to all of this, you've got this guy from Lebanon uh, saying that he's a member of the Hezbollah terrorist group. Why isn't that enough? For Joe Biden to actually use the power of the pen in an executive order and get Remain in Mexico back in place. Look, he has known for years that this is a problem. When we have seen a Venezuelan parolee come in and kill Lincoln Riley, a 22 year old nursing student. It was a Venezuelan that killed Lincoln Riley, right? And I covered that story, man. I think, you know, she was the college student in Georgia. It was a sad story, man. You know, she was just a young girl going to college with a, with a bright future. She was in nursing school. She takes a jog one morning by herself in a secluded area and she's attacked by this illegal immigrant. What a damn shame. And Joe Biden is to blame. What a damn shame. And Joe Biden is to blame for open borders. In Georgia, when we've got a Haitian immigrant who has, a parole, again, another parolee from his parole program come in and is now accused of raping a 15-year-old disabled girl. He's known for years that wow. his policies are an issue. He continues to do them. In fact, not only has he taken off tools from the table that were working, such as the Remain in Mexico policy, but he is now actively flying 30,000 immigrants in from countries like Haiti, Cuba, Venezuela, Nicaragua, into our country, taxpayer expenses, in releasing them. We are seeing crimes increase. The president. Now, I'm going to say this for those of you who probably didn't hear it in the beginning. I had a Latino man and a white man leave me long paragraphs saying, if all non black people left America, you blacks would turn America into Haiti. It'd be, it'd be relentless killing and just violence erupting everywhere if blacks were left running America. <laughs> he said, you niggas would turn America into Haiti if all the whites and non blacks left and you niggas was left to run the country. This should have become Haiti if you niggas was left to run it. Give me your thoughts in the comments. <laughs> Republicans and saying that we need to pass a bill oh. for him to be able to act, even though his executive <laughs> orders have led to what we have seen. The oh, carnage, man. Um, that just it, the, the disgrace at the border. But if he wants oh. to have a bill and he wants to have the tools, we've already given it to him. House Republicans passed HR2, our Secure the Border Act of 2023. If he was really concerned about, <laughs> about uh, securing our borders, Call up Chuck Schumer. Have your Democrats actually pass that bill out of the Senate and you, Mr. President, sign it. 
But the fact is that that's not what this is about. Well, it's just incredible to me. Who would put America in such a vulnerable position? To have wide open borders and certainly- you look at what Emmanuel said. E- Emmanuel agrees with it. He said it'll be Haiti overnight. If all whites and non-black people left America, he said niggas would turn this shit into Haiti overnight. <laughs> hey man, I'm not offended. I really want to know what y'all think, man. Hey, whether whether I agree or disagree, I want to know what y'all think about if 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 America was left and blacks had to run it. All the non-blacks left, would America turn into Haiti if niggas was left to run it? <laughs> Hit the like button and support the show, man. Give me y'all thoughts in the comments. I ain't mad at you. I just want to get I just want to hear y'all thoughts. People coming from certain yeah. locations that oh, are yeah. threatening <laughs> America. Like this guy saying he's about to make a bomb and come to New York. I mean, is it all about yeah. this administration's grasp at staying in power, <laughs> this desperate attempt to stay in power, because I'm wondering if they're just going to use all these people mm-hmm. to try to get them to vote in the upcoming election. Let's not forget, there's the jig is up on what this means, the the, the open border for Democrats. Senate Democrats voting... For- all right, let's go to another. We, we didn't heard enough of them. So, you know, um, yeah, they're saying that, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It'd become Haiti overnight if niggas was running it. It'd be all kind of drug dealing and relentless killing if if America was left for blacks to run it. Damn it. (laughs) I said, whoa, that's crazy, bro. But I get it. I get it. Hit the like button and support the content, man. You say, hell yeah, hell yeah, America. Shit, homie. You know? Support the show. Let's go. Support the show. Let's go. Let's go to my guy, Jose, man. You know, check him out. His his, his channel was called Southern Life. And he, and he breaks down a lot of things about Florida, man, because that's his home state. He's a Cuban. Cool guy, man. I watch his channel when I want to learn about travels, about different cities in Florida. He breaks down the economics, the crime, uh, how much people earn per capita in that city. He breaks down everything. So I'm going to switch over to Southern Life real quick, man. And he's going to talk about Haitians in Florida. You know what I mean? I've uh, showed you guys a video of Jose's before. I think he does a good job. The French more refugees to enter the state and that's what sparks today's curiosity about haitian americans who are these people what have they accomplished in florida and why do they keep seeking to come to this particular state i think we all understand the idea that haitians are coming to florida right now because things in haiti are getting bad but let's learn a little bit more about who these people are and step away from the mainstream rhetoric there are over 1 million haitians in the united states and almost half of them live in the state of Florida, making up almost 3% of Florida's total population. Southeast Florida, the state's largest metropolitan area, is 6% Haitian, home to over 330,000 Haitians. One in every 33 Floridians are Haitian. I repeat, one in every 33 Floridians are Haitian. All right, so before we learn about Haitians in Florida, let's learn a little bit about Haiti's history. In 1791, Haitians petitioned France for citizenship. They felt that the white oppressors, the slave owners, were actually the ones who had revolted against France. Not that the Haitian Revolution were Haitians revolting against France, but that the slave owners were the ones who did not believe in the ideologies of the French. By 1793, the French were in the middle of their own revolution. They actually beheaded their own king, and like the Spaniards and the English who had kings, the French were moving towards an ideology of equality. And the Haitian Revolution wasn't a revolt against the French, 
It was Haitians deciding that they wanted to be French citizens and treated equally in Paris. Well, well, I, let me tell you something, Jose. Yes, it was about France. They understood how France was treating them and they wanted they wanted their freedom and independence. Now he keeps saying, Oh, they just wanted to become French citizens. No, the Haitians that I know wanted freedom on their own island. They wanted to get rid of the French. They didn't want to be underneath the thumb of the French of, of the Frenchmen no more. But anyway, we're gonna let him say what he says, and I'll break it down right after. Hit the like button and support the show. This is why it's important for black people to tell our history, not somebody else. It was accepted, and one million enslaved blacks were now French citizens. However, on the island, the plantation owners, the slave masters, were in complete dis. Well, of course, if you're Haitian and you're in France, hell yeah, you deserve citizenship. With all that free money France didn't got off of Haiti. That's the least they could do. Disgust, and they went on to refuse any treaty with their newly found freed slaves. The island of Hispaniola was split between the French and the Spanish, and the Spaniards supplied weapons to the Haitian slaves because they figured if they could get rid of French rule on the island, then they would have a better chance to control Latin America. While cotton ruled the English Empire, for the French, it was sugarcane. Sugar production was the heart of Haiti's economy, and thus, when the sugarcane was the heart of Haiti's economy, and that is how France got rich, off of the sugarcane coming from Haiti, right? How do you think America got rich? Off of slave labor, off of the cotton and stuff that we picked here in America, the sugar, the cotton, and everything we everything else. America only has its wealth because of the labor that they got from us, the free labor that they got from us that they never paid us for. You think the money just disappeared or the white people used it to build corporations and companies and to buy up more land? That's exactly what they did with the money. It is called systematic white supremacy. That is what they did to control the country. Fact, study history. The Haitians revolted. They destroyed every trace of slavery, which means that after the Haitian Revolution, there was no economy nothing left in haiti they now he's right about that after the haitian revolution what he is right about that once the haitians gained their independence there was no economy there so yeah they had their freedom but they had nowhere to go there was nothing there for them so the conditions got worse yeah they had their freedom but conditions began a worsening i mean it got worse huh so it's like they pretty much punished haiti for standing up for their rights Oh, you niggas want freedom? We're going to teach y'all a hard lesson. Okay. Every single element freedom. of the economy to ensure that the slave masters would have nothing to come back to. Haitians insisted on avoiding conflict and using democracy and diplomacy to ensure that they could have treaties. But in the long run, that didn't work. France ended up literally bleeding Haiti dry, charging Haitians an extensive amount of money for their quote-unquote freedom yeah which in turn turned haiti into the most bankrupt nation on earth yes they were free but they were dearly indebted to france yeah while in the united states african americans were not able to capture their own freedom the brave haitians were able to ensure the freedom of their own country to run independently unfortunately however they had nothing to work with. Economically, they were alienated by the stronger empires who did not like the notion of a free black nation. And right. They hated, they hated the idea of a free black nation. So what did they do? We're going to find ways to make Haiti suffer since, they're, since they don't want to be slaves no more and controlled by us. So basically, France was saying, we're going to punish Haitians for fighting for their freedom and independence. Ain't that some shit? The French who, for the ideological sake of things, decided to charge a premium. The Haitians chose pride over money, and the French were able to exploit it. And in that, it left Haiti in somewhat of a no-direction economy. Yes, you are free, but what do you do now with your freedom? There have been no foundation, no basis, or even no predecessors into what happens to a nation 
when they are freed from slavery? What direction do they go? What will the economy be? None of that was determined. And unfortunately, this lack of direction continues to plague the country of Haiti until today. And that is why now, in the midst of 2024, we are seeing the possibility for another massive migration of Haitians into Florida as the country continues to be in turmoil. Interestingly enough, it was those Haitians who revolted against the French who were in fact more French citizens than the white French slave masters who abandoned the ideology of human equality, which became a basis of the French Revolution. And thus, those slaves were not revolting against the French. They actually wanted to be part of the French Empire. They wanted to be equal partners. Well, they felt like that's the only way they can get a piece of the pie is, is you know, is, is, is uh, conforming because going against the system where they showed you what happened when you go against the grain. Haiti going to fight for independence. We're going to show you how we're going to make them suffer. We're going to we're going to we're going to use Haiti as an example. This is what happens when you go against the white power structure. Haiti is a prime example. You ever renege and go against a white power structure, your country will end up just like Haiti. So a lot of people said, well, fuck, forget. They said, forget fighting against white supremacy. Let's embrace it and follow the ideology if we want a better life. That's why many people, many people in Latin America, all these Spanish speaking countries said, fuck that. We're going to we're going to embrace the white ideology because going against it, we might end up like Haiti. Facts. So the friends, they, they made an example out of Haiti. You think Cuba and the, the DR and Cuba wanted to end up like Haiti? So, no, they pretty much accepted and embraced the, uh, the, the ideology of the slave master. Why do you think so many people from those countries? Oh, no, I'm not black. I'm not black. Black is bad. Black is bad. I want to be white. So they figured, like, if I embrace being white, I will have a better life. And that's been the mentality, the ideology all across Latin America. In the French Revolution. And in a sense, those Haitians were more French than the Frenchmen themselves who enslaved them, who ran off to Cuba or Louisiana, abandoning their French citizenship because they refused to accept the changing times. Interestingly enough, I feel like the same thing is also happening in Florida, where many of these Haitian Americans are more American than the actual Americans who don't want these Haitians here. Let's get into that. See, despite the fact that the Haitians were revolting against the French rule of slave owners, they actually, in ideology, wanted to be French more than anything. And today, a lot of these Haitian Americans are more profoundly tied to the ideology of the American freedom than many of the Americans who say that they don't want Haitians here. And in- I disagree with that. I disagree. How are you going to say these Haitians are more American than the actual Americans who's been here? Like, that doesn't make any sense. I disagree with that wholeheartedly. I don't know what Jose is talking about. These Haitians are more American than the black citizens or any other citizen. You're right. In a sense, thus, just like those Haitians were more French than the French, slave masters who went to Cuba and became Spaniards or to Louisiana to speak English. Well, I feel that today, Haitian Americans in Florida are even a bigger part of the American dream or the American ideology than many Americans who claim that the Haitians don't belong here. Let me explain. (laughs) Oh, The United States was founded by Englishmen, Irish, and other Oh, uh, he said, let me explain. Than many Americans who claim that the Haitians don't belong here. Let me explain. The United States was founded by Englishmen, Irish, and other Europeans who fled oppression and violence and turmoil and hunger in Europe and came risking their lives in boats to the shores of the United States. If that isn't what these Haitians are doing right now, then I don't know what could be more American. There's nothing more American than fleeing hunger and oppression, getting on a boat, and sailing to the edge of America. That That is is not American. He's trying to take what the English settlers did when they colonized the land and say, well, if you flee your country because of poverty, that makes you American. (laughs) No, it don't. It makes you an illegal immigrant who's trying to flee his homeland. That shit doesn't make you more American. What are you talking about, fool? You're making excuses for the immigrants saying, well, if they flee, 
So all it takes to be an American is just fleeing your homeland. That makes you American. Man, that's crazy. That's how the United States was founded. <laughs> and that is how these Haitians that are coming to the United States today are arriving here. It seems like that is the most American thing you could do. And not just come to the United States, but come to the United States to be successful. Let's talk about the Haitian American community <laughs> in the United States. Take Port St. Lucie, where 4% of the population is Haitian. Yeah, man, like, come on, Jose. Oh, look at that iguana on the floor, right? That's a lizard. Look at that lizard on the ground. Well, it is Florida, look. Orlando, where 3% of the population is Haitian. Miami, where almost 3% of the Look at that lizard, man. Yeah. You know, Florida got all kind of reptilians and reptiles running around. Now, right, so how you going to sit up there and say it, it makes you American to flee your homeland to come to America? That makes you American? Man, that's foolish crazy. What is he talking about? You didn't have too many tequila drinks, Jose. Too many tequila shots, Jose. You sound crazy. All it takes is for you to flee your country, and that somehow makes you American. Man, come on. The population is Haitian. Tampa, <laughs> where about 1% of the population is Haitian. And even now, Jacksonville, 0.7% of the population being Haitian. Most Haitians do not live in these large cities, but they prefer suburbs. Golden Glades, Florida, 13,000 Haitians. Pine Hills, a suburb of Orlando, 12,000 Haitians. Boynton Beach, 12,000 Haitians. Miramar, Florida, 12,000 Haitians. Pompano, 10,000 Haitians. Many of these suburbs are going to be between, between 7 to 33% Haitian in South Florida. Take North Miami, which is 33% Haitian. Currently, Broward County, Florida has seen a huge influx of Haitians. And while historically it was Dade County, Miami, that was home to the Haitian community, it looks like now Broward County is really the Haitian stronghold in South Florida. What is the reputation that Haitian Americans have in the state of Florida? I have worked with many Haitians over the years, and they seem to have among the best reputation of any nationality for employees. They are punctual, they are well-groomed, they are polite, they are hardworking, and very respectful. See, I, 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 I listen, man, I'm tired of hearing that all these immigrants are hardworking, and all it, all it takes to be American is for you to flee your homeland. That makes you more American than the so-called citizens. I call bullshit. All these people are just so humble and respectful. They're dedicated hard workers. Yeah, right. Over the years in South Florida, I've worked with people <laughs> of many nationalities, Mexicans, Cubans, Guatemalans, but none are more a joy than Haitians. Haitians really are the best workmates you can have. They seem to mind their own business, do their own job, refuse to do anything that doesn't pertain to them, and thus they stay out of other people's businesses. What a better workmate could you ask for than Haitians? And what industries do Haitians predominantly go for? But I got to be real. Jose is, you know, he's for immigration. You got to think he's Cuban. His people came here like that. So any immigrant group, he's going to prop them up. You know, that's just his take on it. But for him to say that makes you American to free your homeland, that's just ridiculous. That's 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 just ridiculous. Or in the state of Florida, female Haitians have a great reputation in the healthcare industry, in particular with taking care of elderly people, people in hospice. They usually are going to prefer Haitian American staff because they feel that they are warm, caring and embracing and thus, they become a favorite of most of the people that are patients in these facilities because they are in charge of providing the absolute best care, love, and attention for their patients, as well as in hospitality. When you talk about hotels in Florida, many times when traveling across the United States, I have found that hotels in Florida are much cleaner. The hygiene, the cleanliness in hotels in Florida is known to be... Now, my thing is this. Why do we give immigrants props for working here? But their countries is like, and I'm not trying to put the Haitians and Mexicans and all. I'm saying is this, bro. And you're going to say, well, they can't fix their country because it is. Okay, man. But America is already established based on what foundational black Americans and the white Americans and what we did over here. Right. How are you going to make it seem like a group of immigrants who come over here and work for pennies? How are you going to make it seem like they're making the country better? They're not.
They're just working for cheap labor, but they're not making the country better. Come on, man. Make Mexico great again. Make Haiti great again. Make Venezuela great again. What about that? Be among the best in the entire state, and that is to be thanks to predominantly a large percentage <laughs> of Haitians who work in hospitality. As you travel to other states like Arkansas, Alabama, Missouri, where they don't have a significant Haitian population, you're going to find that the hotels are usually pretty freaking disgusting. But here in Oh, so Jose saying like when you go to Alabama and other states, other states in the South where you don't have Haitians and you just got black Americans, it's nasty, it's filthy. <laughs> He's saying that the Haitians are keeping Florida clean. Now, when you go to those other states in the South where there's no Haitians and you just have black Americans where the hotels are dirty. There's no hospitality. <laughs> According to Jose. First percentage of Haitians who work in hospitality. <laughs> As you travel to other states like Arkansas, Alabama, Missouri, where they don't have a significant Haitian population, you're going to find that the hotels are usually pretty freaking disgusting. But here in the state of Florida, we have Haitian mamas, and they do a beautiful job of keeping our hospitality clean. Oh, he said in Florida, we got Haitian mamas. The Haitian women keep Florida clean. But you go to Alabama, Georgia, Missouri, where they don't have Haitians, the black Americans are keeping the place filthy. But if you want cleanliness, well, you got to go to Florida where the Haitian keeps the place clean. You black Americans, you, you keep the place filthy. You have no hospitality. You better learn from the Haitians, according to Jose. In Florida is known to be among the best in the entire state. And that is to be thanks to predominantly a large percentage of Haitians who work in hospitality. As you travel to other states like Arkansas, Alabama, Missouri, where they don't have a significant Haitian population, you're going to find that the hotels are usually pretty freaking disgusting. But here in the state of Florida, we have Haitian mamas, and they do a beautiful job of keeping our hospitality clean, which means that if you're traveling in Florida, make sure you say merci and give a good tip to the staff at your hotel because chances are it's going to be exceptionally clean. Because See, look, the, he, you got a Latino guy right here. He said African-American hospitals are nasty. <laughs> See, I don't get mad when people type things. It, it shows you how people really think. But he said African-American hospitals are nasty. That's what Couples Light said, you know. Jose said the same thing, man. Them niggas in Alabama where you ain't got no Haitians, man, the hospital is filthy. There's no hospitality. You go to Florida, well, the Haitians keep it clean. Yeah. Because Haitian Americans are known for that. It's no secret that cuisine in Florida <laughs> is one of the main reasons that tourists love our state. The state of Florida has Cuban, Venezuelan, Haitian, all types of cuisine. But it usually doesn't matter what type of cuisine is being cooked. If there's a chef in the kitchen and the customers are happy, there's a good chance that the person cooking is of Haitian descent because Haitians are known to be among the best chefs in Florida. I worked at a bistro in Naples, Florida. Jose giving the Haitians they props. He said they're the best chefs. They keep the place clean. They give you hospitality. Unlike American Negroes. Yeah. The directly under a French chef. Yeah. And he would actually sit there and study how the Haitians would cook to figure out how he could copy them because they were exceptional chefs. And it is not a secret that in the state of Florida, if you're having a good meal at a fancy restaurant, particularly expensive dining along the coast, you can be almost certain that the cooks in the back are going to be I-10. But what is more American than being self-employed? In fact, that is the most American thing you can do when it comes to working. And in that case, there's a lot of entrepreneurs in the Haitian community. In fact, Haitians are known for being entrepreneurs. And many young Haitians today are taking advantage of the economical freedoms that the state of Florida offers to be self-employed and become very wealthy through their own hands, their own businesses. The state of Florida is known for its Latin infusion. I don't know if you guys know this. Haitians are actually Latinos. 
because they come from Latin America. They're not Hispanics because they do not descend from Spaniards. At least most of them don't. Thus, Haitians are not Hispanics, but they are Latinos. And Florida is known for Latino fusion, Latino vibes in our culture. Now, I got a, I got a clip about Haitians talking about being considered Latino. Uh, you know, some Haitians will say, no, I'm Creole. Some will consider themselves to be Latino because of, you know, the, uh, the geographical location. Hit the like button and support the situation, meaning the show. Let's go. What do Haitians bring to the table? Among the youth, quite literally the most popular artist right now in the United States is Kodak Black, a Haitian-American from Pompano, Florida, that with his unique style and Haitian flavor has pretty much taken over the rap scene. If you're into hip-hop, you most certainly know the name Kodak Black, and he is Haitian American. Many generations. Oh, he talked about Kodak. Oh, Kodak. Now, a lot of Haitians don't consider themselves to be Latinos, but then some of them will based on geographical location. But if you look at your DNA, Haitians ain't nothing but Africans dropped off on the island. They're African. They just were, you know, colonized by the French. Dominated and subjugated, colonized by the Frenchmen on that island. So, no, a lot of Haitians do not consider themselves to be Latinos, although some probably do. Let's go. Generations back, it was Wyclef. When it comes to music, you'll be surprised to know that many of your favorite hip-hop artists and singers could be of Haitian descent. However, most Haitian Americans do not listen to hip-hop. They listen to traditional Haitian music called Gompa. On today's video description, you're going to find a playlist that I personally made that features a great collection of Gompa music. If you've ever wondered what the beautiful music of Haiti sounds like, make sure you watch that after you finish watching my video. Haitians have been dearly influential in the evolution of hip-hop. If you guys remember Lil Wayne when he came out, he would rock the Haitian bandana. And from that point forward, Haitian American music has been influencing hip-hop for a long time. And many of the sounds that we hear today throughout the United States are originating in South Florida. A vast majority of that talent today coming from descendants of Haitian Americans. And many American artists like Plyce, Trick Daddy, Pitbull, Rick Ross, and other names that are known in the state of Florida are almost always going to give credit to Haitian Americans in their music. So we can say that when it comes to American culture, Haitians are not just a background element. They have brought their talent to the forefront. And right now, one of the leading sounds in America is the sound of South Florida through the voice of Haitians. They have been able to push their culture to the forefront of a very industrialized and competitive world, showing the talents. Fort Lauderdale. Oh, he's in Fort Lauderdale right now. That's where Jose's at. You know, that's South Florida, you know, Fort Lauderdale. So I guess they got like a, a, a sizable Haitian community now, because like he said, back in the day, the majority of the Haitian community in Florida was located in Miami, Southeast Florida, mainly in that region. But now they've spread it out to Fort Myers and Fort Myers is on the, um, the Gulf side, the Southwest side of Florida. So now you have Haitians more so spread out you know, through the state now. They're not just concentrated in one area like they used to be. Hit the like button and support the show, y'all. That's what they have when it comes to music. You can find Haitian restaurants in most Florida cities. If you've never tried Haitian food, I definitely recommend it. It's laid out like most Latin American food, but it's a lot spicier. Many times these restaurants are not actually going to have a menu you select from. They say that the Haitian food so they said yeah you feel me they said the haitian food is like similar to other latin american food but it's spicier a little bit spicier so haitians like a little bit more spice to their stuff man don't have to try some of it out um, but you ask the chef what the meal of the day is somewhat similar to the french soup du jour so if you've never been to a haitian restaurant it can be a little that, that's true. i did hear that they said that a haitian founded chicago and I've, I've heard about that a long time ago i repeat they say that a haitian Founded the city of Chicago. Let's go. Give me your thoughts in the comments. Intimidating because you don't actually always get a menu. You kind of just ask them what they have. Usually asking them what their soup of the day is and combining that with rice. Griot is a very popular Haitian dish, which is fried pork chunks with a spicy sauce. Usually Haitians are going to run their beans through a blender and thus their bean soups are going to be more a soup 
than actual beans like you would have in most Latin American cuisine. So if you're open-minded to try... So, so what he's saying is the Haitian take their beans and blend them. That's pretty unique. I would like to try it. Bring some new cuisine. I definitely recommend Haitian American yeah. restaurants. Just be open-minded to the idea that it's not so much what you want, but what they have. One of my all-time favorite Haitian restaurants is Coco's in Fort Lauderdale. Now, I will tell you the neighborhood is absolutely grimy, so just keep that in the back of your mind. <laughs> He's telling you to go to a restaurant in Fort Lauderdale that's Haitian, but the neighborhood is grimy. Well, if it's so grimy, why would people want to go there? I don't know, especially if you're a tourist. But I get my grill there. Currently, the governor of Florida has made it clear that he wants to keep Haitians out of Florida. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Canada, their prime minister there in Quebec has said that if any Haitian speaks a French language, which many of them do, they are welcome to move into that province and have legal status. Oh, well, shit. The Haitians need to go to uh, Quebec, Canada, because they speak French up there. So it makes sense to send the Haitians to Canada, man. Send them to Canada. They already speak the language up there. He said if they speak the language, they'll embrace them. Okay, then. That's more reason for Haitians to go to Canada, not America. Let's go. That is there. And in Montreal, there's currently a large Haitian community. We visited that community, and this is what it looked like. So while the head of Florida is saying we don't want Haitians here, the heads of states in Canada are saying, hey, if you speak our language, you have the right to be here. Come on over and be part of our community. What a difference. Many Haitians are now settling in Mexico as well and refusing to cross the border into the United States, knowing the hate and racism that exists here. And in Mexico, Haitians are starting to create their own communities, and they are known as being hardworking people. Haitians are starting to be beloved in Mexico right now because, as the Mexicans say, they're willing to do anything for a peso and do not hesitate to work. Thus, the Haitian community that now that's why that's why that's why I showed you guys the clip earlier about the Haitians in Tijuana and how how a lot of Haitians have uh, settled there. They've been living in Mexico. You know, some say they've been welcomed there. Hey, man, it is what it is. You know, I've heard mixed stories, but hey, who am I? But check it. Yes, it makes sense for them to go to uh, Canada's because they got a French community there. And they said, well, they speak the language. We'll accept them with open arms here. So, yeah, send them to, send them to Canada or Tijuana. Exist in Mexico is getting a fairly good reputation for being hard workers, never saying no to work. So while many places like Florida are now closing the door on Haitians, despite the fact that Haitians are part of the fiber culture and history of Florida, Places like Mexico and Canada are definitely reaping the benefit of the desire and ability of the Haitian people. Unfortunately, over the last few decades, Haitians have become accustomed to living in very difficult conditions, especially after that great earthquake that Haiti had and many other natural disasters. Many people in Haiti have become accustomed to living in fairly unsanitary conditions, unhoused, homeless, and shanty towns and thus those people are going to be having a much more difficult challenge adapting to civilized life in a country like canada or the united states many years back it was only a small percentage of haitians that you could tell were from the slums but today many of the haitians that are coming a vast more percentage of them are coming from shanty towns and slums. And you can just about tell the difference by watching how they behave. It's a difference between somebody who grew up in a normal civilized society versus somebody who over many years has been homeless, living in shanty towns or tents. Those people are going to have some difficulty. Look at it as somebody who's been homeless for many years or somebody who's coming out of prison for a very long time. When they come out, they need time to readjust to the world. And unfortunately, today, the conditions in Haiti have deteriorated so much that when people finally leave Haiti, they need some time to acclimate to civilized society. Yeah, yeah, that's understandable, man, because, you know, you got to go through that transition. You go from living like that. You're not going to come here and behave civilly when you come from poverty. I said that earlier in the show. You're not going to come here and behave civilly when you come from um, poverty. You know what I mean? A poverty stricken country. You're not going to behave civilly when you get here.
Haitians that came in other generations have been more successful, more education oriented, more business educated, and just more prone to be. Yeah, yeah, there's ghettos everywhere. There's ghettos everywhere. You know what I mean? Everywhere you go, you're going to have your poor people. You're going to have your, you know, middle class or maybe people that are more so well off. So, yeah, that's going to exist everywhere, no matter where you go. You know what I'm saying? It's just it happens to be worse in certain places because certain places are more poverty stricken than other than others. I get it. Be successful. Unfortunately, the Haitians that are coming today are coming from a completely different world. And honestly, the same can be said about Cubans, Venezuelans, and other people coming to the United States today, as the conditions in Latin America have deteriorated greatly over the last few years. Hit the like button, family, and show some love, man. What I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna make a part two. I'm gonna make a part two tomorrow because I got some more information about the Haitian thing. And we're gonna take calls on that one. I don't really want to take calls on this one. I wanted to spend more time breaking these politics down and then when we do the second show tomorrow we'll go into the cause man and we, uh, we'll see what you guys think about if america should allow haitians since they allow millions of mexicans and venezuelans i want to get you guys thought about thoughts on that tomorrow so what i need you guys to do is to like this content share the content make sure that you subscribe to the channel get us up to 30k we didn't pass 25k get us up to 30k then we're going to move up to 50 and we're going to hit that hundo real quick. We're going to leap real quick, right? And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to strive to move forward. Now, this is what we're going to do. I got to get up out of here, people, man. I gave you guys two hours and 30 minutes of content. Now I got to relax and chill and get my thoughts together. But I will be back tomorrow with some more dope content. Hit the like button and support the show. I got to get up out of here, y'all. But make sure that you watch the. If you haven't seen everything, watch the replay. Soak up the game. Mm hmm. And we'll be bigger and better for tomorrow's show. I think you guys already know. Peace, love, and blessings. Giving you game to keep you from stressing. I'm gone.